Hello and welcome everybody. How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are excited as we are and welcome to the Evasion GG EU Solo Battles Round 1. I am very excited guys. If you are not familiar, we are Evasion. We are a streamer battles organization here putting on great competitions. But I am joined by two absolutely handsome devils here today. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Doc J. Hey guys, good to see you again. Welcome back. This is going to be a fun, fun day. But yeah, my name's Doc J, uh, former Navy Corpsman, and now I play a lot of Tarkov and uh, cast here at Evasion and absolutely love life. <laughs> and we're also joined by the absolute, I mean, this this man, look how, look how handsome he is. Look at this guy. Oh, Spectre 21. Spectre, go ahead and tell everybody about yourself, buddy. Good afternoon, evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Spectre 21, uh, daytime Tarkov streamer, and absolute just pleasure to be here to enjoy some evasion content with you today. Well, awesome. And we are we are absolutely ecstatic to have both of you gentlemen here casting all of the events today. So before we go any further, I want to introduce you guys. A lot of you may be joining us from the trios battles that we just recently did. This is the solos battle, a little bit different format than the trios. We have four competitors competing across five different events. Each one of the competitors will go into the maps with different rule sets. They will be loading in together for most of the events onto a live map with other people and just insanity ensues from there. But before we go any further, let's, uh, let's take a look at who is competing in today's event for the group stage one group stage a here we have angry elmo tv raccoonzel if you guys were part of or watched trios at all raccoonzel did compete in that then we have blank tv and dex stravaganza but all four of these competitors will be competing today in some of the best events that we have ever seen in solos here at evasion now before we get into the festivities and all of the joy that we're about to experience let me go ahead and uh, let's talk a little bit more about Evasion and uh, get ready for all of that. Guys, if you want to know more about Evasion or any of the events that are coming up, head over to the website evasion.gg. You can find all of the rules about the events that are going to be happening today. If you want to compete, you can find information about the applications. You can find a calendar about everything and all of the events that are coming up that we have scheduled. So that way you always are in the know of when to be here to catch some of the best Tarkov competitive events uh, across the internet. So make sure you head over there once again, evasion.gg. Also, you can find the merch store over there, evasion.gg slash merch. Pick yourself up some swift, the skin, you know, awesome merch. I, I, uh, Doc, you have a hat, right? Uh, I got the jersey, man. You got the jersey. Mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. really really cool stuff over there and guys make sure you're also following evasion on all of the socials evasion underscore gg on twitter instagram tiktok and most importantly if you want to check out any of the past vods from any of the competitions head over to youtube.com slash evasion underscore gg and you can watch all of the vods whether it's from solos in a trios whatever the events are you can head right over there oh man guys I'm kind of, I'm excited and nervous about today because like EU is one of those that like, I don't know as many of the EU competitors. So when we get to watch these, these folks from, you know, across the pond compete, we, we really learn about a lot of competitors I've never watched. And that's how I've learned, you know, or, or found a bunch of people to watch on Twitch is through these events. Is there anybody from today's list that you guys are most excited about doc? What about you? Um, I have seen uh, Raccoonzel perform in the past, and uh, she could be an absolute beast. Uh, she's very methodical, and uh, she's always cool, calm, and collected, too. If you ever watch her streams, or just, just notice how she handles any situation that's thrown at her. It's, it's pretty awesome, as well as uh, Dex. What I love about Dex is he's always so positive, always having a good time. And again, we're here to have fun at the end of the day, and uh, he takes that to the new extreme. Mm -hmm. And Spectre, what about you? Any of these competitors you're looking forward to watching today? I'm really looking forward to watching Dex. Um, from the little bit that I got to see of him, he 
prefers uh it seems like he prefers a long range engagement style he does a lot of sniping mm -hmm. and that kind of thing like slow methodical so i'm really interested to see how that's going to translate to the events today and the approach he takes to the challenges so that's what i'm looking forward to yeah and, and for me like i i blanks tv which who is you know previously known as the merch guys uh, uh he had recently had a name change over to blank tv so i i've watched a couple of his gameplays and i'm very excited to see how he's going to do in this objective oriented so well, that's the one i'm looking out for but i mean do you guys want to get into and, and see what our first map is going to be what we can expect to oh, see yeah. here so the very first competition that we are coming up on is going to be factory gun game just like gun game from back in the day you know we all have played this we or most of us have i i, I assume you know, you get a kill, you switch your gun up based off of what weapon they were using. Now, what's the strategies after we, we saw this unfold in, in NA a lot. We saw some interesting strategies with melee kills. I mean, we had, we had I believe it was um, Chuski had the most melee kills of anybody. He just decided to, to forego shooting people or he forgot about his gun and just decided to melee. What, what are you guys thinking about strategies here? Yeah, Chuski was Not an absolute Jake. unit. Yeah. Uh, he he didn't care about bullets or slinging late. He was like, I'm going in straight for this knife kill, and I'm going to stack the melee points as much as I can. And it was crazy how much that was working, too. I, that was the first time I'd tried to, I've seen uh, someone try that whole, like, melee meta, and uh, he did it pretty well. Maybe it's only a Chuski thing, though. I know he's built different, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, and, and it might be a Chuski thing. I'm excited to see if EU is going to do the same thing. Spectre, go ahead and read the rule sets for everybody. Let them know exactly what we can expect from this. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So on the factory gun game, this is a solo event. Our location is factory, obviously. Our time limit is the map timer, so they can have the full raid to use today. The objective, our PMCs are tasked with swapping weapons with their last kill's primary weapon, Points are gained for killing scavs and PMCs. Bonus for melee kills. If you melee kill, you have to take their primary weapon. The rules, the loadout, they have to take a pistol in and they can bring any meds and armor. They are not allowed to use any throwables, any thermals or night vision, and they're not allowed to have a run through. They will get points by killing scavs for one point each, killing PMCs for one point each, a total of three points if they get the dog tag off of their PMC kill. Melee kills are one bonus point. Killing Tagila is five points. And extracting the raid is five points. That That is a, you know, it, Factory Gun Game is always, like our, our first map here at Evasion is always a warm up map. We always have this like, hey, let's get the competitors warmed up for the rest of the event. Um, now we did see this and, and we're referring to in NA's events a lot here because we did we have that as a point of reference. Now we saw some competitors put up huge points in this, which was kind of mind blowing. And and it it's a lot of fun. Spectre, what do you what do you think, you know, do you use this as just a warm up or do you just try to rack up as many points as you can as fast as you can in this map? Um, I think it's definitely good to kind of get people into the mindset of the style of this season of competition, because all of the challenges in season five are, are very unique. They're very tactical. They're very, um, thought provoking. It's not just go out and go full Chad and kill as many people as you can. You really need to think about what you're doing. And I think this is a really good way to get people into that mindset of thinking about what they're doing, remembering that they have to go get that weapon. So it is a really good warm up. I feel you definitely want to get as many points on the board early on as you can, but I think it's going to really set the tone for the rest of the competition for these competitors. All right, now we are jumping into the raid here. We're going live. We're we go. listening to angry Elmo right now. And let's see what kind of raids we have on factory. Angry Elmo, locked and loaded, ready to put some points on the board here. Stimming up, get the juice flowing. It's always usually crazy right off the gate. Uh, it's zero to 60 really fast here, especially the route that he's about to take. 
Now you will notice, chat, they are getting in at slightly different times. There may be a little bit of a delay on one stream or the other. Keep in mind that they are all working on getting in raid at this time. Dex in the lower right there just spawning in. I like how Angry Elmo is taking a little bit more slow, cautious, listening for shots first before just sprinting. And they do have the full map timer, so they are not in a rush. Inspector, I know, like, we've seen this before. There's usually a lot of action in the first, you know, five, ten minutes. Whoa! Yes! Guys oh, he's going to the one. hallway. Another one down the hall. Peek this angle, crouched. Dex also getting into it. Oh, oh no, exposed. He's, He's got to grab this tech. weapon. Hopefully there's rounds in there. Get to a spot, get to the shower, heal. Yeah, there's usually a lot of craziness in the first, you know, five, ten minutes, and then it kind of dies out. So capitalizing Ooh. on that time. Oh, he didn't even see him. Nice. Oh, cheeky play. Good play. Let's go. Oh. He needs to find That's going to be a new chant. Let's go, Elmo. Dex just absolutely wrecking. Oh, and another on one. Stairway. Dex, wow. let's go. Oh, God. Oh, oh what? Oh, no. Dex is down. I thought he had that shot, too. He GG's Dex. GG's. Oh, he's going, he's going for the go. melee. <laughs> Good stuff, Elmo. We got Raccoons in as well. Absolute Doc, game face noticed. going too. Angry Elmo only brought in one set of armor and he's already gone completely through it. Jeez. I know we typically see people bringing extra armor in here, and I wonder mm -hmm. if that's going to cost them here. Dude, extra armor, extra face shields, helmets, whatever you can to prolong your life. Prolong your stay here, you know? Raccoons are going in straight for the point fire. Uh, oh, she did get a bleed on her stomach. It's a stressful it's situation. It is, because then you have to like, you have to figure out the timing. Yeah, do I take safe. the time to try to heal that bleed, or do I finish off the threat first exactly. to live and, uh, to be able to heal that bleed? It's a, it's, it's a tough call sometimes. So I'm not even armored anymore on my chest. We're just getting out now. Take the extra for the extract and call it good. All right. Angry, I'm gonna decide to get out, grab some points. Five points for the extraction. Right. That's not bad. Uh, Raccoons will on the hunt here. No stranger to the pressure at all. She actually handles it really well. Let's see if we get that point fire a little bit more accurate. And she'll be, uh, be owning. There we go. Using the sights. Spectre, what would be your uh -huh. pistol of choice going into factory gun game? Um, chill, chill honestly. Probably the Glock 17. I think that's the one I'm most comfortable with. I like it. Excellent choice. AES. Feels good, man. You have to go with what's most comfortable, what you have muscle memory with, yes. what you're able to hit those shots with. That's what matters. Absolutely. We have Blank TV down there on the bottom right. Taking out a scav, now going to grab that uh, scav's mm -hmm. weapon. Again, chat, this is factory gun games, so they do have to swap weapons with their last kill and then use that to kill the next person and so on and so forth. So if you're curious why they're grabbing the, the, the worst Sega shotgun imaginable uh, or a Taz <laughs> to use it, uh, they have to. <laughs> now just a quick scoreboard update. Angry Elmo did get 13 points out of his raids. So a perfectly respectable first raid. I think it served him well to get that quick extract. Wait, you hold on. You Definitely. get a bonus for killing with a sword, even if it's a scab? Yes, yes. 
Melee oh, bonuses. Oh no. Thought that was just PMC. Blank just realizing he could be uh, from the ones that the going one? Rambo, Rambo with his machete. Yeah. Have to have to be the one that you kill. 20 minutes, which is in Tartana. Okay. It's like Raccoons will get the kind of the short end of the stick here with a lot of PMCs already being dead in her raid. Oh! Nice! Good stuff. It just keeps yeah, it did more seem quick. a little quiet okay. in a raid. Push it over here. Blank on the main screen. Raccoons are down at the bottom. And uh, yeah, they're both just on the hunt. That's what I was saying. It, uh, uh, the action happens fast, and then you kind of have to be on the hunt after that to, to find any action. Maybe wait until that, uh, that marker comes in where the uh, player scabs load in. You can hear the footsteps. Hold on. Now, Spectre, would you be playing it kind of slow? Taking your time, or do you kind of just run and just run in and just search it all of the pods? Oh, stick with it, stick with it, stick oh, with it. That's oh, a tough no. one. That's a tough <laughs> fight right there. Man, that is it. I was just you thinking. You did the about... best you could with what you had. That Taz, it's very hard exactly. to get successive shots. Man, what were you saying, uh, Spectre? I apologize. No, I was just uh, I was just thinking about that pause as she was trying to clear that hallway. Oh, going for the melee. There you go. Weapon lock him. Get close. Get close. Um, oh, oh, no. no. Oh, boy. <laughs> man down. As soon as you get out of their bubble, man, they just destroy Shit. you. Once you commit, you got to stay committed. GG's blank. Man, I fucking hit him in the head. Did you see that what? level 71? <laughs> He's cracked. Did I see that what? With double click. Blank killed a level Man, like, 71 PMC there. Oh, oh wow, <clears throat> wow! A level that 71 PMC. Man, that was a uh, that was that was quite a first first map and event. Some uh, some right? very quick up and downs from all of our competitors. <laughs> I, man, I like. I'm sitting here watching it and, and we just see everybody like they, they get in close. They, they, I, you know, we had one competitor. He didn't, he got multiple kills with his Glock, but he never switched his weapons. So those didn't mm -hmm. count except for if he picked up the dog tags guys, you know, and I want to take a minute to say, Hey, all of the competitors have a battle mod with them. The battle mods sit, uh, do all of the scorekeeping their their point of contacts, their lifeline. You know, we, we pretty much tell the competitors, here is a battle mod that this person is your point of contact. Use them how you will. Some choose to use them a lot. Some people, you know, are just like, hey, just be there if I need anything. So once again, much love to all of the battle mods that we have competing today. And those battle mods are Ventoras, Damien, Kinsta, and Poe the Tato. So much love to all of our battle mods. But Spectre, what what was your moment from that competition right there, from that first round? It was very quick. That was a very quick first round. Mm -hmm. What was your highlighted moment? Um, there was a lot. There was a lot that happened in that raid. The one that struck me that we were trying to talk about there at the end was uh, Raccoonzel going into the office area with the Taz. That is that's a rough situation to be in no way to cut it like the Taz is very very tricky to use if you miss the headshot you're in trouble and we saw that but she got multiple shots off there but it's just so hard to recover from that with that weapon so that was one of the things that stuck with me is uh with the factory gun game you get stuck with those crappy weapons and mm -hmm. that's what you've got to work with so that's the beauty in this challenge and that's what I really appreciated in that one now, now, Doc, I, I do want to ask you. Uh, well, I was going to ask you real quick: Is do you think she was she would have been better off not using it if she wasn't comfortable with it, switching to her melee, and then just being like, "Look, I'm going to not get a kill with this gun. I will get the bonus points using my melee, then hopefully get a better gun." Do you think that would have been a better call? You know, that's what I was going to say on top of uh, what what Specter was talking about, and the reason why I love factory gun games so much is that it adds a different dynamic and a variable that, like, if you just kill the scav and now you have a Taz, you have to make that decision. Are you going to push that hallway and where the offices are with a Taz, or do you go on the hunt, try to find any other scav that has something a little bit better? 
a Sega shotgun, a pistol, you name it, something that is going to have repeat fire that you can put accurate fire on um, successive shots downrange and then push those locations. You know he's up there. He's not going to go anywhere any that that time soon. Do you find something else before coming back or do you just go out and push it? That's the tough thing. And then if you do push it, you do have to make sure you hit that headshot. Yeah, and, and that's very true. I mean, the, the Taz, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I love the Taz. Like, it is one of those guns that if you ever just want to have a good time with, just take it into factory, load in some Devastator rounds, you know, ha have a good time. But it is a very, like, a skill-gapped weapon. Let's be honest. It's it's a very interesting. So her getting that was very unfortunate. Now, let's talk about, real quick, let's also talk about Blank. What happened with Blank? You were talking about this at the end there, getting inside of that Scav's bubble and leaving it. Like, he, he do you think he should have just committed, Doc, to that melee all the way through? 100%. You're already in his bubble. Yes, it's taking way too long for the Scav to go down. I agree. Uh, but you're already in the bubble. He's not going to be able to shoot you with the, with the weapon locked up when you're that close. Yeah, he's trying to, but as long as you stay there and you're moving with them, just keep hacking away. I think you have to you have to commit at that point. There's no going back. Well, and the other the other benefit to that is if you guys like weapon or um when you're stuffing their weapons when you're that close inside of their bubble, you have a tendency to be able to actually stuff their weapon and they'll turn it you know multiple times and then shoot off to the side because you know the scavs you know scavs they might have drank the radiated water a little bit too much sometimes mm -hmm. so they don't always do the best <laughs> but that is uh that's gonna get us ready for our next stage that was uh, that was an exciting first round we're going into the next one which is probably one of the most interesting concepts that we have come up with here at evasion and this is our customs rat run now the entire concept of this is that competitors are going to go against their nature they are all of the competitors that we have are chads as the quote-unquote terminology is they're very aggressive competitors they they like to push fights they like to get into it and this competition this round they load in together and it they are a hundred percent forced to do the exact opposite. Now, Spectre, what is your thought process on the rat run? Uh, I was just thinking, I think this is my favorite map out of the competition. Um, it, like you said, it takes them out of their nature. Like most competitors that come to evasion are really, really skilled at engagements, at racking up kills, but this dials it back to more of the, one of the core elements of Tarkov, which is survive and get loot. And I love that this highlights that part of it. And it forces people, we're, I, I hope that we see like we did in NA, this, this map, this challenge makes people really, really uncomfortable. So it, going into this raid uh, is, is going to cause people to think about what they're doing a lot. It, it truly is. It truly is. Doc J, go ahead and tell everybody exactly what we can expect from the Rat Run Customs. All righty. Rat Run Customs. They'll be loading in as a group. Customs daytime. They'll have approximately 20 minutes. PMCs are tasked with looting any found in raid items from the raid for points. While we're mating a pacifist, uh, they will lose points for killing enemies. Only items in your bag at time of extract will count as points. Their loadout, they can bring any weapon and armor. They have to bring in a tri-zip bag two stims, four non-lethal grenades max. What's not allowed? Grenade launchers, Mark 18s, Reap IRs, Fleers, T7s, or run-throughs. Uh, just a quick note, stackable items must be max stacked before another stack can be started, i.e. ammo and uh, points breakdown. You will lose points for uh, for getting kills. So if you kill a scab, that's minus three points. Killing a PMC, minus four points. Killing Rashala, minus five points. Extraction's gonna gain you five points and founded raid items are half a point each and those points stack up really quickly yeah that they do now specter i, I do want to ask you one more thing about the the rat run that we've seen you know in the past with the four non-lethal grenades do you personally just bring four flashbangs or do you mix in smokes with that i think me personally i would focus on flashbangs um I I, I've never had a lot of luck trying to use smoke grenades with their intended purpose. 
I think I would rather try and uh, distract or divert attention rather than try and conceal my movement to try and blind whoever I'm worried about and then just get out of there. Yeah. And, and that's a, and that's a very true point. I mean, I, smokes aren't terrible, but I do feel like maybe, maybe they have a tendency to be a little, you have to really understand the smokes in this game to be able to use them effectively. That's putting and it very so, nicely. Doc, what about you? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna throw this question to you, also, Doc. Uh, about like the strategy of uh, the the rat run. Well, no, no, of the of the smoke grenades and the uh, flashbangs. Like, what what would you would you bring? Just flashbangs? Would you bring just smoke grenades? Just flash for me, my friend. Just flash. I I, I I'm not in a point in my life where I'm gonna trust it with a smoke grenade in Tarkov. Unfortunately, I've seen them be used very well uh defensively and offensively to cover your positions and uh your movement and your pathing but i think with this one i'm gonna rely a lot more on flash because i know it's gonna work if i place it there it's gonna work that'll give me enough time to get uh out of the out of the danger basically and move on all right casters take it away let's get right into it all right so we're coming in listening to raccoonzel here on our quad scene all the competitors are in the same raid from here on out. Keep that in mind. So what they're going to do, starting off, they're going to go separate directions. Fuel, but I do hot. And at a certain point, I will you'll hear you know. the raid called hot. But I will let you know. Okay. So after that first minute, they are, it's a free-for-all at that point. Anything's on the table. Up to that first minute, the competitors are not allowed to engage each other in any of these subsequent competitions. Getting some dispersion here. Blank eye. I kind of like the way he's going. I think that's going to open up a little bit more opportunities for loot. I'm curious to see who's going to who's going to rush dorms first. Who's going to pull the old sheaf method? That honestly, <laughs> I I, I couldn't believe. Oh, go ahead, my friend. I uh, just going to say, I couldn't believe that Sheaf did that. It was a, a bold strategy on his part. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, interesting choice by Raccoonzel there to go ahead and kill that scav. Oh, did she actually? She actually took out that scav. I completely missed that. That is interesting. Because, again, you're you're getting negative points. Negative three points per scav kill. Uh, you, you really want to make sure you make that up. Raid is now hot. Yeah, Sheaf pushing uh, dorms right off the bat. Holy cow. Uh, built different. <laughs> Absolutely. Different level of comp comp competitor there. I mean, he did get a... The spawn worked well enough where he was able to get in there uh, before it got too crazy. Right, he's the only thing you'd have to worry awesome. about is scabs at that point. I... Uh, so, I mean, and there's so much loot to be had there. I mean, you do a quick pass through dorms and then you're, you're good to extract at that point. There's no, no use milking it. So angry Elmo, Elmo uh, I believe he, he popped the scab with the star around. It looked like it that way. Why do I have scab? Oh, did you get the though? residual? <laughs> Excellent choice bringing in the star rounds as well. Scaf. I saw Chuski using them, and man, they, they will they will cover you in a pinch. Blind your target just Absolutely. to get away. And like you were saying, Spectre, it's the... so cool to see this. This this is why this is one of my yeah, favorite um, events of this I'm season. Is you get to see them playing so much more there. defensively. And instead of like... We all know that they could absolutely wreck house That's and kill pretty much anything on the map. There. These are These are absolute competitors. But when they have to do the opposites, when they have to try to figure out how do I get around this target that's trying to kill me without without killing him back uh, I it, it it makes for much more fun situations and and how they how they react to it absolutely uh the, it this one's really special like you said it kind of separates the the men from the boys the women from the girls in this style of competition and one of the things I look for in the solos season five solo specifically 
is who brings the KS on this challenge? That's one of the mm-hmm. first things I look for to see who goes for that. And it's it is interesting them. as well. Switching over to oh, blank, blank here. To piss off. Taking a shot. Oh, he's going full aggression. He wants... Does he think this is a competitor? And he just wants to avoid the competitor of points? And to avoid him? Or does he just that say, is, heck it? That is a potential strategy. There is a duffel bag to your far left against the wall. Oh, yeah, there is a what I was going to say, Spectre, was I, I, thought, I, I find it interesting that with this pacifist oh, this game mode, I... That scamp by the truck over that, can they they still bring in like meta weapons, like yeah, completely yeah. geared out weapons. Now is that just in case they do have to lay down some lead that they will win that fight, or what do you think the thought process is? Look 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 at this look at this thing. Holy cow! It's that's about as meta as you can get. Oh, there, Rakuzel. PMC kill. That's gonna cost her four points. Um, to your point, Doc, I think yes, um, while they are losing points for getting the kills, ultimately it's more important to survive the raid, right? Because if you're able to fill up your bag with loot, you're probably gonna overcome that point loss pretty easily. It's gonna hurt you against the other competitors if they don't engage, mm-hmm. but ultimately getting out with some loot is, that has to be your end goal. That's what's gonna, win this for you so if you do get in a fight you want to have the best advantage possible right exactly two points i want to bring up here uh what what sigma said in chat this one makes them think i absolutely agree and the next run it, the next one is the chad run which uh they, they get to let loose and be a little bit more comfortable this one they have to they have to think about it a little bit strategize a little bit on what they're going to do but uh to the second point i think it's it's curious that uh this is the most aggression i think i've seen live casting uh for the for the rat run where they are they are more willing to shoot and kill scabs or pmcs than we've seen previously uh rather than just avoid it altogether we've seen it to where uh, was... other competitors just they just want to stack their bag and get out they don't care how long it takes them if, if they're out in five minutes they're fine with that here it looks like hey if they need to get a kill they're going to get a kill and they don't mind taking the loss that's one of the things I was just thinking about, Doc, uh, before you brought that up, is we didn't see anything like this in, in, in NA. Uh, they were mm-hmm. very, uh, very passive, the very set, right? slow, methodical, sticking to the corners. Uh, these EU competitors today, they don't care. They're out ready to mix it. They're getting kills if they have to. They're just pushing it. Man, that's scary. EU, you guys are cracked. They, they, they don't care. They're like, give me the <laughs> negative points. I'm still going to blast you. <laughs> so we do see blank taking the sheaf approach and going into the dorms here could net him a lot of points if he's able to get out of there alive oh yeah did this map have extra points for any items you can hear him asking his battle mod again big big shout out to all the battle mods today no. and all the battle mods in general that make this thing flow uh you guys are awesome man the unsung heroes and they deserve uh, all the, the credits and all the love. A big shout out to uh, Poe the Tato, Keensta, Damien, and Venturi. So, looks like we're I'm starting to actually notice getting here. dangerously close to Dextravaganza. Hot on his heels. You're noticing what, Spectre? Uh,. Yeah, I was uh, going to bring up the same point that they're in a very close proximity of each other now. And one of the one of the oh, thoughts choice, in this is if you do run into another competitor, uh, I actually had somebody ask me about it earlier when I was explaining the rule set. Do you would you want to team up together points. and try and combine forces or do you Ooh. drop them right there and deny them those points? Oh, wow. I didn't think about that. That is a big brain move right there. That'd be fun to see. That'd be, that'd be actually very interesting to see how that would play out. Now, we've seen, like, with the, the Gino uh, incident where he, uh, he was like, you know what? I'm, go- I'm going to take her out, and I'm going to avoid her of points. And so <laughs> he laid there and stalked. Uh, so that is one method as well, you know? Just make sure if, if you're not going to get the most points, at least they're not either. But teaming up, I think that that'd be really cool to see, Spectre. Uh, that's definitely something I'm going to look for and see if we get that opportunity this time around. Hey, 
Again, they're... And Grandma just laying down suppressive fire. Again, they're, they're trying to get as many found and raid items as they can. They want to fill their bag. And that's why you see the rigs in there, so they can hold a little bit more. Uh, and you, you'll see, which is very smart, they'll start switching out. Once their bag is full, they'll start switching out their two or three slot items or single slot items. It doesn't matter what the items are. It just needs to be in your bag. So if you could switch out something uh, for a single slaughter, that's going to gain you more points. Oh, that was fucking close. Switching over to Angry Elmo here with Blank in the lower right, who looks like he got into a little scrap there, apparently. Yeah, he was saying something was close. Maybe he was avoiding the scab there at Ice Cream. Oh, my fucking grizzlies on my mind. Again, we have two competitors pretty close to each other. And it's not too hard to tell who the competitor is. They Do are wearing tri-zip backpacks. On these guys? Oh, fuck. <laughs> and generally, <laughs> you don't see people me. running tri-zips with Altons running around the map. Right, so... right. Meta Mark 47s <laughs> and with a KS on their back. Yeah. I like um, Angry Elmo's choice check. here with the rigs inside the bag as opposed to where you can see Blank has the two rigs that give him in total more slots. Angry Elmo opted for the approach where he's afforded some quad and dual slots as well. So he has more flexibility in what he can put into his bag compared to Blank who can carry in total more items. Mm -hmm. I did like the method... I did like the method as well. Yeah. Um, so all their items have to be in their backpack. They can't be in their gamma. But uh, we have seen, like, if you find something very valuable or you find a good item, uh, they'll put it in their gamma just in case they die for their own personal sake. Uh, but when they go to extract, they'll actually switch it over to their backpack so it counts for the points. I like that as well because it's a, you know, they're, 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 they're using their own accounts here and you can run out of money very quickly. Uh, you have, you know, spend it on a bunch of kits for the tournament. So... If you could knock out uh, two birds with one stone and find something valuable, then that, that helps as well. Absolutely. That's one thing I say when I run labs raids. The first thing I try to do in a labs raid, once I know that I'm not getting pushed off the rip, is try and grab a couple items to stick in my gamma as a consolation prize. Because you yeah, know you're exactly. going to lose in labs more than likely. Might as well I'm not get leaving out. Chuck E. Cheese without this bear, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of loot out on the way. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm just nervous about and that. So we are coming up on the halfway like point. The competitors have 20 minutes for this challenge. We already have Ooh, I know uh, I one go. successfully I extracted. I know where I could go. We'll see how long the rest of our competitors decide to stay in this raid. And again, chat, what makes this rat run on custom so much fun to watch well, is that, that? I've already done that. I've already done that. I've you, they're avoiding the PvP. You never see that with Tarkov in general, let alone in a in a tournament. But here, they they you want to avoid PvP. You're actually going to get docked um, points for kills. You are trying to be a pacifist and just grab all the loot you can. So it is fun to see these highly competitive people uh, that can just murder the whole map. i um, doing the opposite. It's 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 it's, it's awesome. Oh, wait. Pause, 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 pause. Going for the trunks. Okay. Gotta search every last nook and cranny. <laughs> Plenty of space left in the bag there for blank. Tons. Hopefully you can get that filled up really quickly. Again, you don't have to be picky. Just grab everything. Now, one thing I have noticed, uh, I don't think any of our competitors have made it across the river yet. Uh, they seem to be taking a long time to fully loot this side of the map, which is good. Um, it'll be interesting to see when they, the time in the raid that they cross the river, because that can be uh, a dangerous maneuver depending on where player and player scab movements are at the time. 
Need to got both rigs filled, chat. That's huge. That is big. Filling up both the rigs. That is huge. And it's not it's not too hard to do. If you hit up uh, the compound or stronghold or dorms or any of these uh, spots with you know high loot items, you just need to grab as much as you can. Single slot items, fill everything up, and then you're good to go. And then you kind of min max as uh, like on your way out. Nothing of this is found in raid, so I guess I can't loot this, right? I can see it as counting. That's correct. Oh, Only I... found in raid items. Yeah. Oh, oh, Rakunzo! Oh, oh, Rakunzo's no! down! Did you no! Oh, man, that is... Well, that is unfortunate. I, GG's, I Rakunzo. GG's. That's a, that's a tough one. Very little noise coming from that, uh, from that other person. As well, was, had there been any that signs like that he was in there, you could have maybe thrown a defensive uh, flash and just avoided that area. Or, yeah, that's tough. PMC died. That's a real shame to see Rapunzel go down because she's not going to get any points for those items, and she had to kill a lot of stuff in that raid. So that mm -hmm. this this map is going to hurt her a lot. Oh, sorry, Scab. Um, it's also going to. It's also going to cause Blank there getting that kill, but he he for sure can max out all of his space now with found and raid items. He probably wants to go ahead and head towards the extract. Feels like I'm lagging behind. Yeah, when you think about it, Specter, this is the only. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong too. This is the only event in season five where you actually come out of here with negative points, which is very scary. Uh, co correct. It can. It, it can be a huge point swing for you, or it can cost you. It can really, this is, I think one of the bigger separations we see in the overall competition is in this raid. He's outside. There's Rakunzo. Okay. Does her tag count as one point? I think I'm kind of limited Oh, so Blank actually took uh, out Rakunzo. Yeah, go. Am I seeing this correctly? He's grabbing her tag right now. Come on, Sniper Scaff, take him out. Get the loot and get out. Yeah. And now oh, he's he's nice. able to just drag her loot over to his, and he is good to go now. <laughs> I heard the guns level. No, 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 no. So you, we heard him no, asking no, no, no. about uh, the tag counting for bonus points. It does not in this competition oh, because, again, it's supposed counted. to be avoiding contact. I'm gonna do so he's only going to get points for those found in raid items I in his bag. Scabs are trying to help me. I'm gonna hide it's, it's almost as if he was a little bit confused on... Uh, the specifics the of the, yeah, the, bag. the point layout on this challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, the, the battle shot. mods help out so much because they'll be in your ear it's telling you uh, so it, what the layout is, what to go for, what what you're going to get points for, answer any of your questions. So again, big oh. shout out for the battle mods. Love you guys. No final rate stuff, but I'm going to set your ATG. Thanks. So we are down to our final two competitors <laughs> oh, in this raid now, oh, Angry Elbow and Blank. Everything single slot, yeah? And honestly, if I were them, especially no, Angry Elmo here no, with no, zero no, 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 no. hydration there, okay, I'd be heading like towards this. the extract. Yeah, staying, staying hydrated oh, and uh, yeah, staying, uh, who, who said it last, last tournament? Okay, staying nutrition. Uh, is definitely key. It's very important. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like Blank is going to go ahead and... This one, and then we... Oh. oh, can he make the jump? Oh, I don't think I can do that. No that was impressive. <laughs> right, parents, ask this in a competition standpoint. Do I sit at extract? Ooh. Obviously, I know you Ooh. can't tell me who isn't red. I don't want to know that. Ooh. Now. Okay. okay. Feisty. Blank thinking about pulling a Gino over here. Don't oh, worry. He's out for blood in this one. Right? Does he wait at extract? Wait for the last competitor? That's dirty. That is dirty. I mean, he Most he has time. I mean, it was a he's definitely not going to, you know, he's well equipped. It. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and get out. It looks like he did fill, he did, he did fill every single space. 
Well, That's going to be big points for blank Full GGs. Stop. And then there was one. And Grielmo, let's see what he does here. Yes, I saw. Okay. Curious to see how many spaces he needs to fill. Uh, we can drag the one slot of three, three slots in that one. Do this. And then we're full, but we do have a four slot. And let's try to change that. Now, if I'm hearing correctly, he's only got less than three minutes before he has to extract. So uh, he's definitely got a lot of fire. That's another two items instead of one. So it sounds like he is starting to think about swapping out his bigger items for smaller items to try and maximize his points. Obviously, single slot items are going to help you a lot here. Shoot me. Exactly. It's half a point each for each item. It doesn't matter how big the item is. So the single slot items are going to net you more points than the uh, the double or triple slot items. Oh, that's calf. Ooh, piece of candy. We can grab the mag for a one slaughter. Yeah. Grab the mag for a one slaughter. Unload the ammo from the mag. Smart. Throw that. Two items. Please be a one slaughter somewhere. No. Guess not. I'm just getting out. Yeah, take whatever you can get. <sighs> GG's Elmo. GG's. Not completely min maxed. Yep. But I think I was lagging behind someone the entire way. That's uh. We're going to see a, a very interesting development in the scoreboard here. Mm -hmm. It looks like that one is going to cost Raccoonzel quite a bit. Minus mm -hmm. five points, man. That is that is tough. Yeah, I mean, that that entire map, man, I was not expecting that. So Raccoonzel takes a, takes a kill, takes two kills. She kills the scav and another PMC, then dies to blank TV inside of the power button building, which, you know, he loses points, but then she loses out on all of those points she had in her bag. That, that was a map that I was, I, I was not expecting that much shooting. I'm going to be honest with yeah. you guys. I was not expecting that much action. Same. Spectre, what, like, what do you think was going through Akunzel's head when, I mean, the first PMC that she killed, I feel like she had to. She had to get into that fight yeah. because it was just like, look, I'm going to die if I don't, and I'm going to lose points. So she had to. Um, is there, it, like, man, it's so hard because you know she has to. Is there anything you would have tried to do different there, Spectre? Uh, well, so one thing I'm going to say is, the pathing and just the play style in general, uh, I think these competitors had a hard time breaking away from their routine. And that's what put them in those engagements because they're used to running the same route to try and get, you know, that PvP, PvE engagement. So I think they had trouble breaking away from that, which I tend to be more of a rat player sometimes when I play Tarkov. So for my personal approach, I definitely would have tried to avoid the pathing that we come to expect on a map like customs. So I think that's one of the things that uh, might've been tricky for them here today. And like you said, she kind of just being in those situations, she had to do what she had to do to keep herself alive. Right. So it was, it, it's kind of a, you know, damned if you do damned, if you don't situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Very, that's what very I think much is, so. It's about the approach that they took to the map as a whole. Yeah, so very much so. It, it does put them in that situation. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our scoreboard after two rounds. Oh, wow. All right, Angry Elmo coming in first with 41.5. Close behind, though, is Blanks. Now, imagine if Blanks had not killed Raccoonzel when he did. He would have had those extra points. That would have put him further up, but he did, so he's at 38. Then we've got Dextravaganza. Six, I don't know why I have to say Dex's name like that. Uh, but I feel like I do. I need to add that <laughs> emphasis to it. Uh, sitting at 16.5 is a really smooth run for Dex during that entire that entire map. Just did what 
Dax had to, you know what I mean? Got his stuff left. Uh, Raccoon's all sitting at minus five. That really hurts. I mean, two rounds down and you're at minus five, but there's still a lot of competition to come. And luckily for all of the competitors, we're going to be moving away from that rat style gameplay into something I think all of these competitors are a lot more comfortable with, at least for the most part, getting into more of a, a, a Chad stance. You know, we're, we're, getting, we're getting the competitors, they're all getting into that, hey, I want to... I want to murder, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. this, this next map is one that, oh, I, I, it's, it's interesting. We're, we're going to interchange for the Chad run interchange Chad runs coming up. So after that last map of them having to play so passively doc, what do you think about this? What, what's your strategy now? Cause idea is a very dangerous place now. Oh yeah. It's gonna, it's, I think there's gonna be a lot of high octane action with this one, but that they, this is their comfort zone. This is what we've come to know and expect when we play Tarkov. So we're, they're, we're gonna see them in their elements. Uh, they're gonna be able to bust out all the, the awesome pro level plays, and we're gonna see some probably some competitor on competitor action too, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah, this one, this one's gonna be a good time. Yeah, it, it really is because this does emphasize on get in there, get a lot of kills, and do the Chad thing. Just murder, murder, murder. Spectre, go ahead and tell them exactly the rule sets that we can expect in this competition. All right, so for our Chad run on Interchange, obviously we're going into Interchange in the daytime. The time limit will be 25 minutes. The objective, PMCs are tasked with killing everything and getting high-tier loot items. Our loadout they can take anything they want to limited to two stems and two grenades, no more, and not allowed to bring a GL, a Mark 18, or any thermals. They also cannot get a run through that will avoid their points. The bonus items you can see here in the middle, the LEDX, Bitcoin, GPU, Tetris, Skull Ring, Ophthalmoscope, Roller, VFib, Moonshine, Bronze Lion, and Gold Chain. Each of those items is worth two points each if they can secure it. Their other points are going to come from one point scav kill, one point PMC kill, three points if you secure the dog tag of the PMC, killing killer will get you five points, and successfully extracting will get you five points. Now again, no run-throughs, so you do have to survive the map to get those bonus points. That's very true. So... Let me ask you, Doc, getting in, getting into the Chad run interchange, the competitors here are all about getting in, getting into those fights. What would your strategy be going forward? Like, you're like, you know, especially like put yourself in Raccoonzel's situation. We know Raccoonzel can kill. What do you think's going through Raccoonzel's mind? Uh, Raccoonzel, as we know, is a stone cold killer. Uh, she's very confident in a firefight. I feel like... As much I'm kind of torn with this one. As much as I would like to say play it safe, maybe skirt the out the edges, um, where you have a lot of line of sight and you can check the stashes, you can check all the loot spots outside. I think her element's going to be inside where the firefights are happening and hopefully coming out on top. Um, and I don't think that'd be a bad call at all. I know she's comfortable with these firefights, uh, and hopefully it works in her favor. But yeah, maybe just taking the fight straight straight ahead, getting back in your comfort zone, shaking off that last round, um, and just put some more points on the board. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Spectre, now what would be your route through this? If you if you had to, you know Kill is all over this map. He spawns in the most absurd places sometimes. What would be your route through this map? I gotta tell you, I gotta hit on the, the killer thing real quick first. Uh, for one, I've been getting wasted by that guy in weird locations, like you said. <laughs> but one thing that I find interesting is uh, during the NA solos, that change where he could be anywhere on the map actually happened in the middle of that competition. So it kind of caught people off guard. This time, people know it's happening so they can expect it, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interested to see how that might change what we see. As far as my personal approach, um, I have I definitely have hard pathing that I use on interchange. And it's honestly, it's one of my favorite maps. 
So I'm fairly comfortable with it. I'm fairly um, experienced with how players move there. So for this challenge specifically, I'm going to be driving hard paths to where I know PMTs are going to be. So if I'm near power, I'm pushing power. If I'm near idea, I might skirt through it, see if anybody's in the office, and then I'm going for the middle. I'm going to go find those PMTs wherever they're at. Yeah. And, th and that's a great call. I mean, it will be interesting to see where our competitors spawn, because remember, all of our competitors are spawning in together. They load into this map together. So if they say spawn at power, do you take that opportunity to go ahead and flip the power switch so that way the power's on inside the mall so you can go get maybe a LEDX or go up to Ultra Medical? Do you, do you check that? Doc, what about you? Do you uh, check, do you check ultra medical? Uh yeah, depending like like like, like Spectre was saying so with the pathing, I'm um, I would have no problem uh, flip, flipping on the, the power switch and uh heading on in there and uh, again, I think I would focus more on getting the kills and taking out as many things as I can that I see moving. I uh, I think I would focus more on that than finding bonus items personally. If I come across one, awesome, but I don't think that'd be my sole strategy, but that's just me personally. All right, so we are getting into raid here, listening to Dextravaganza. We can see the uh, back of Ollie spawn here. And interesting, Dex actually flipped a 180 here, and he's taking a very different route than the rest of our competitors. Again, we do have to be in raid for one minute before the raid goes hot and they can engage each other. And it looks like our other three competitors are kind of close to each other right now. So we'll see how this develops, if they try and go straight for each other or they try and give each other some space. Looks like Raccoonzel's trying to get a premium position. Dex already searching the stashes outside. I like it. Yeah, going for those bonus points with the value items. It's a mm -hmm. good backup. Dex already taking shots. Get inside, get to cover. Oh no. Oh, that was close. Okay. Is on. Oof. Now I did notice uh Dex is wearing that raid bag. That makes him a really big target, especially to be outside running around like that. So interesting mm -hmm. decision there. It affords him the opportunity to pick up some loot, but it definitely increases his silhouette as well. Ooh, raccoons will get into it. Blurry vision. Oh mm. my. Oh, and she's down. No. no. I'm dead. Man, that suppression, it completely <laughs> took away her vision. At that point, she's spraying and praying all you can do in that situation. Taking shots right to the face. Uh. Oh, man. GG's Raccoonzel. That's rough. That is rough. Guys, go over to Raccoonzel's chat right now. Throw a GG. Oh, throw a follow. Throw some Blank love. also getting into it here. Gotcha. Blank took a uh, ricochet off the helmet, it sounds like. Lots of action here already. My man's an RGB gamer. He is indeed. Get the fuck out of there one time real quick. <laughs> GG's to Raccoonzel. I love... Uh, you mentioned earlier about her, her sportsmanship and how... Uh, just calm she is and I love mm -hmm. the way she handled that death. It was you know, I'm dead. We'll move on. Yep Exactly shake it off. Uh, let's try to make up those points. It's what I really love about Rakunzel, man She's uh, and she just she's we're seeing her just kind of get a tough break and Tarkov can do that to us sometimes I uh, but man, she is one heck of a competitor an awesome Tarkov player. I would implore you to check out some of uh Some of the things that she's done man. It's it'll, it'll blow you out of the water I have someone above me I'm just gonna try to move, move, uh, spread out. Be Maybe sure, chat, to go and check out each of these competitors. You can see links for each of their pages in the chat there. Uh, any competitor that's on evasion is vetted to be. Oops, contact here. Oh wow! Straight ahead. I need to remember that I am meant to kill. That's something that I need to get in my head. Repeat in that same angle. Very dangerous. Reposition. Or throw another nade as a diversion to reposition. Oh, yeah, thanks. 
Holy cow. This is a pucker oh, factor if I've ever seen one. Oh, oh no. Dex. 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 Back with a grenade, I think. Press one on the back, right? That's tough. Uh, um, interesting decision to keep holding that angle rather than try and disperse and get, you know, something else. Chilling out. Exactly, Spectre. You can't triple peak a double peak. It just it's not it's not gonna work. It's not gonna it's not gonna be in your favor. Never tri triple peak the double peak. I can't even say it. <laughs> uh, just once again, guys, make sure you go check out these competitors. They are they're vetted to be worth your time to go check out as Tarkov players and as streamers. So please go give them a follow. Follows are free. Uh, go support these guys and girls and enjoy some good Tarkov content. Yes, yes. Blank might hear something. Also, uh, just down. as a heads up on our, see if we can find our tournament system here, the top two competitors from each stage, we'll move on to the next round. So our top two competitors today will advance to the semifinals for their bracket. So it's not just the top competitor here. We're looking for the top two. And that can that can change very late in the game here. So stay tuned and we'll see how we develop. Mm -hmm. oh. Angry Elmo taking a look into uh, Tech Light over here. Might be able to cop some, uh, cop some points. points. Blank laying down some hate on somebody. Getting a good reposition here, see if you can spot him. And Grielmo also maybe getting in with a scav. Okay, buddy. Taking some shots there. Super scav. Here's another one. Uh, whoa! Oh, no! Whoa. There's a guy behind me as well. Oh! Unlock all. Unlock all. Man! That ambush! Holy! That guy was snug yeah, in there tight. So more than actual TMC. Holy wow. cow! GG's blank. I did not see that coming. Man, we have a lot of competitors just getting straight to Harkov today. What an angle! Holding the front entrance doors. Wow. <laughs> I. I I actually bought a couple of them just for this because I normally don't bring them, but they're faster. Than I like so, his decision so. to bring out the back, uh, the backup armor. Was planning to bring those, and now I just forgot them, so now I just don't have. Absolutely, those. especially for a competition like this where you're destined to get into fights. That's your whole primary Without purpose armor, here. I would have been Definitely mm -hmm. good so. to have that backup to have a little more little longevity in raid. Exactly, and with the face shield as well. If you get shot and it takes a round to the face, uh, you get that big old bullet hole right there, and you can't see anything. This is uh, switch it up. Least Clear vision again. Don't play it enough. All them dark corners and uh, very bad eyesight. Not a good combo. I'm in the same boat as you, bud. That's a good oh. point. Um, interesting fact about Angry Elmo, who you're watching right now, he is actually 87% like, blind. Of your and I'm like, I don't see Holy him. cow. 87%. So he is definitely at a major disadvantage in this game. And one of the things that he communicates to people he plays with is, hey, if I say comms, well, I, guess I, I need you to be quiet because I rely so there. heavily on my ears check. in this game. I need you to give me that space. That so he uses chains. sound to compete in this game. Really, really impressive. I just stack up some points that more. Oh, we saw a guy just a little scabby moseying on through. Stack up that point. There you go. Nice. Add an extra point to the tally. Easy little one tap. Man, the uh, the decision to bring in an MP7 and M61 MDR. Ooh, right. Angry Elmo. 
He's not messing around. He's got all his bases covered for sure. Scope it out first. And as if he heard us talking about it, highlighting why he decided to bring those two weapons. <laughs> he's got he's got the whole spectrum of distance covered here. I actually really respect that decision too, because now you have you you have the whole gamut, like you were saying. You can engage at medium to long range with your MDR, and then for CQB, you would just bust out your MP7 and absolutely own and feel confident. And we know with interchange, you're gonna see a lot of both of those, depending on where you're at in the map. Very smart. Checking for that gold chain again. That is one of the bonus items that'll cop them some extra points. Oh well, is what it is. I don't know why so people quick... leave so much valuable stuff inside of a locker. You know, like a gold chain. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stash that stuff away. Quick uh, <laughs> scoreboard update here. Uh, unfortunately. Dextravaganza and Raccoonzel getting zero points for this raid. Blank securing five points for this raid. So this is going to give Angry Elmo an opportunity to really distance himself here. If he can rack up some kills, secure some items, this is his opportunity to stretch out a lead. Ooh, what a spot. Goodbye! That is a I really good spot. I've off. never seen anyone do that, I don't think. Yeah. And it's it, it's shadowed really well. That That's works. a good one. Have to... I learned so much oh, from watching these. It's insane. You think I'd be like a god Absolutely. Tarkov player by now? <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the best things about the evasion tournaments is you get to see so many different competitors with so many different backgrounds and styles you get to learn a lot of really good moves, a lot of really good plays. Uh, it definitely has made me a better Tarkov player for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another scab that's yelling over here. So now just on the hunt for scabs, trying to stack up as many points as you can. I like it. While also listening for uh, player movement and shots. Good use of a flashlight there, I like it. That's what, five scabs? I think so. One thing to hit on the, the flashlight comment, uh, I find it yeah. interesting that he has kind a lot of, of discipline with his flashlight, which I really I like. Uh, one, of the, yeah. one of the things I struggle with trying to use lasers and flashlights is I don't ever turn them on because I'm scared to give away my position. Yeah. But Angry Elmo is doing a really good job of, of not doing that, not giving away his position, but flipping it on at the last minute when he needs it. So he's really good about that. Yeah, I'm the same way, Spectre. I, I, even when I bring him in, I find myself using it less for that same, uh, for that same reason. I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to highlight where I am, what I'm looking at, or just be like a, a lighthouse, you know? I, but I've, seen, I've been seeing him used so well i wonder if they're if they have it like keybinds on their mouse so they could just toggle it on and off uh, only when they need to clear a room or if they're in a pvp i might i might have to try to try that out and see how that works maybe find some items in so let's see if we can get a poll going in chat can we see is the preference for you in chat to use a flashlight or to use a laser on your guns in tarkov which do you prefer Flashlight or laser? You know, me personally, I've been going back to that old school on. method of uh, the IR blob. Just using the blob for the uh, the the bonuses that it gives. For the grouping. And I'll just call it good oh, right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Both they're saying in chat. I like it. I respect it. Why not four flashlights and four lasers, you know? Why not a happy <laughs> face? <laughs> the power of the sun. 
You see some of these guys coming in with crazy setups. It looks like the Eye of Saruman when you fight them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Spartan. I like that approach. You have a laser on all the time, and then you can flip it to the flashlight. One of the great things about Tarkov is you have infinite customization options in terms mm -hmm. of those things. The old sharp tooth beacon rifle, Brian says. Sharp tooth being perhaps the greatest threat on interchange. Oh yeah. Fantastic Tarkov player. Now Angry Elmo, he's just on the hunt now. He's just trying to tally up any scavs that he could find uh, while, you know, if he comes across any of the bonus items. I'm um, pick, picking those up, and now it's just... Whoa, whoa! Out of nowhere! Is he still up, or did he get him down? Time? I think so, man. That, that guy is a peekaboo master. <laughs> you got this, Angry Elmo. You got this. Man, that actually scared me. I was, I was, I was in my zone. Like, I'm like, okay, he's just on the hunt, and... <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen, and boom! Holy cow! I know we we kind of forgot other players could still be on the map. If I know stashes, no, I don't. What's up over there? Oh, never mind. So, what do we got? Now there here? is no rooftop to that office. You can, if you have a nade, you can just chuck that in there. He's just gonna sit there. I want my arm, man. So we can see our timer down here in the bottom left ticking down. He's getting down to the 10 minute mark. So he's going to have to be paying attention to his clock here. Make sure he doesn't spend too much time. Buddy, I want my arm back. Wants his arm back, he says. Almost, yeah, he's gonna have to fight without his arm. Pick it up, put it in your bag, and go, man. You can attach it later. Oh, this is always a sketch push. Mm hmm. Oh. Did I not? It looked like that, that, that name hit the shelf. Five. Wow, delay on the grenade there. How is that two seconds? <laughs> He's so comfortable right now. He's taking the time to evaluate his equipment. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh no! Wow. Angry elbow. Not sure how that is two second fog zone. But I, no! Holy cow. And he goes down. Oh. GG's though. Yeah. I had to. Turn. I like the aggressive push. Like I had to go for it. Oh, it's not even one of us. GGs. I thought it was one of us. Angry Elmo. Man, to a PMC as well. PMC is still left on the map. Interesting point. Yeah, nuts. Um, we didn't have any successful extractions that raid. No, 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 we did not. That was, uh, that, man. That was not the, uh, what, what I was expecting from Interchange. We did see a lot of action there. Unfortunately, every one of our competitors did get taken down during that map. And the points, oh man, the, the point spread for this is getting, it like, it didn't really change. Like, that map was very, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a rough, it, you know, let's just be honest. It's been a rough day for our competitors in Tarkov, and that does happen. I mean, as all of us that have played Tarkov for a long time, we know we have our good days, we have our bad days. And unfortunately, today is just not being one of those days that is cooperating for the competitors. Let's take a look at the point spread. Nothing's really changed. Like I said, Angry Elmo still holding on to first with 47.5. Blank in second with 43. And Dex in third with 16.5. Raccoons are still sitting at minus five with two maps left to go in the competition. And it's going to be extremely difficult for her to... Get back into it, but not impossible. There are still a lot of points, and if the other competitors are taken out early, 
she has a chance to move up. Now, remember, like you guys said, this is bracket format. So the top two competitors from today will be moving on to our semifinals for Group A. Or I'm sorry, to our semifinals from Group B and A. Like one will go to each. So that way they will not compete against each other again. And then same for tomorrow and Sunday. We will have two more other competitions this weekend. So be sure to tune in for all of those. Now, real quick, because we are going to go to a commercial break, but I do want to ask our caster something about the interchange map that we just watched. <sighs> do you think the spawn had something to do with the difficulty that our competitors just face doc j tell me right now like i i want your opinion because i feel like they had a hard time getting away from each other yeah it was uh it was a little bit chaotic there from the, from the start i think just you know like you were saying tarkov giveth it also taketh and i think uh this is one of the rare cases usually we'll see it with like one competitor they're just having a rough go uh this has been pretty spread evenly across all the competitors um, which is unfortunately, it's just one of those days in Tarkov. I I think just the, the the problem lies once they once they were inside. I think you know with Dex, you know triple peak in that double peak. I think that could have been done better. Raccoonzel, I don't think she could have done anything different. That was just a that was a bad hand. You know that was his luck of the draw. I mm -hmm. uh, angry Elmo again, just having an issue with those Vogs and the push. There's not. I I, I it's hard to it's hard to critique. It's just one of those things, man. It, uh, mm -hmm. Tarkov really, uh, they're yeah. Tarkov to, <laughs> to say less. They really are. They they truly are. All right. Well, now is your chance. If you need to run to the restroom or grab a drink, make sure you guys head and do that. Now we are going to go to a short commercial break. And when we are back, we're going to get right back into some more solo battles action. Can't wait. See you then. And welcome back. I hope you guys got a drink, ran to the restroom, because you are not going to want to miss any more of this action. The last two maps that we have for you are always very, very action-packed. And for some of these competitors, we are going to hopefully see them pushing very, very fast to get as many points as they can, because they are a little bit behind right now. Oh, we are going straight into Die Hard Delivery on Shoreline. Now, this is a very interesting game type where the competitors are actually trying to get out as fast as they can. They are trying to run. It is a race to the extract. Now, to do that, though, they can't get a run through, so they still have some objectives to do on the map. We will see our competitors go to two of four spots to drop some batteries for some vehicles that need to have a little bit of a repair done to them. They need some power, you know? So we got to get them a new battery so people can try to escape from Tarkov with the cars. They also need to pick up at least three kills before they leave. Oh, Spectre, what is your thought process on this map when it comes to the competition? How do you expect these competitors to move around? Um, so like we're going to see with the, the point layout here, uh, it's important to try and be the first one out if you can. So I think knocking your objectives out, accomplishing your tasks and getting as far as you can, as quickly as possible to, to try and get close to the extract. If you can pick up some extra kills, awesome. But I think forward momentum staying ahead of everybody getting to the extract area as quickly as possible is really going to be key here mm -hmm. so it, it is going to be one of those interesting things depending on where they spawn how they are going to maneuver through this map doc j go ahead and tell the folks at home exactly what we can expect from Die Hard delivery shoreline you got it so uh players will be loaded in as a group uh daytime shoreline they'll have approximately 25 minutes and they are tasked with racing extract while delivering two car batteries to any of the eligible vehicles and killing at least three enemies failure to place both batteries and kill three enemies will disqualify the competitor from extraction points their loadout can be any weapon and armor a pilgrim backpack with two car batteries two stims two grenades max no grenade launchers, no Mark 18s, no Reap IRs, Fleers, T7s, or run-throughs. The vehicle list is the UN truck behind admin building, ambulance in Resort Plaza, car near bridge at Power, green truck at gas station, crossroads, 
and the points are as follows. Scav and guard kills are one point. TMC kill with no tag is one point. TMC kills with the tag is three points. Killing Sanitar is five points. Each battery placed is four points. And extraction for a first extraction is 10 points. Second extraction, six points. Third extraction is three points. And for the last extraction is one point. Yep. And that this is going to be something interesting that we are going to see because there is kind of like really two good routes that you could take from this. Now, Doc, I, I do want to field the question to you. What would be your route? Would you stay towards the shoreline and, and go for those two cars? Or would you push up towards resort um, and try to drop off there? W what's your thought process? You know, lately I've been having the worst luck at resorts, so I think I'd be sticking to the shoreline. I think it'd be a little bit safer there um, in trying to engage engage scabs and uh, getting kills, you know, medium to long range. Um, yeah, take it, not not taking the fights to the uh, to the resort if I don't have to would be my personal choice. Mm -hmm. Now, what about you, for Spectre? Because if you put put yourself into this situation. You're one of the ones that are lower behind, like you're you're behind in points. What would your route be? Okay, so real quick, we are loading in here, listening to Blank, and our competitors, again, have one minute before the raid goes hot. Uh, I'm going to take the advantage of answering your question from this perspective and saying with this, one of the close one. resort spawns. The one place. Um, I gotta be honest. I'm probably gonna rush Whoever's in front, with what I expect priority. everybody to do is rush into resort, try and hit that ambulance, drop off quick, and then from there I have the opportunity to to get into maybe some kills, secure some kills, and then I'm gonna dip out as fast as I can to try and get to the rock passage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. Well, before we before we get too far into it, guys, I do want to go ahead and once again thank Battle State Games for supplying us with the money for this prize pool. These competitors are competing through these two weekends for a big chunk of change. So once again, thank you so much to Battle State Games. Casters, take it away. Yes, much love to BSG. Thank you for making a game that we all love so much and as well as uh supporting what we do here at evasion uh again i just want to add on top of that uh bunny thank you again so much to all the competitors big shout out to the competitors make sure you go over there and drop them a follow uh give them a ggs all right so the raid is hot now you can see the timer has started they have 25 minutes angry elmo go ahead and right, dropping off. off one of his batteries okay. to the truck there Raccoon's old, taking out a uh, sniper scav up there on the rock there. Copping a quick point and a kill. Very nice. I'm excited to see uh, Raccoon's old trying to oh, yeah. make her way up three things. from the deficit the last couple raids. That's no problem. And let's see some more points on the board. Hopefully Tarkov uh, will treat her a little bit better. We need some, we need some luck here. Absolutely. And thankfully, this is another challenge where every kill is going to get you points. So she's in her element here. She has the opportunity to really climb out of that hole and put herself up on the board. Interesting choice with the red dot as well. You see a lot of people bringing uh, variable zoomed optics on shoreline. She's saying, nope, all I need is a red dot to click heads. Lots of scabs here. If she can take them both out, there's, there's there her three kills right there. And she's nice. Oh, there's one left. Oh, there's a third. Pulling back, playing it safe. I like it. Nice little reposition here. So she has her three kills. If she's able to drop those batteries quickly and just get out. Nice. And another one down. Get those three batteries dropped off. Get out of there. Get the 10 extra points for first extraction. That's going to be huge. I feel like, you know, obviously they don't know if the other competitors have extracted or if they've died. But I feel like if it's been a decent amount of time in raid, Spectre, at that, at that point, you just decide to stay and try to use your time limit to, to stack up the points with uh, scav kills and PMC kills? Or do you still try to get some, uh, like, what, what's your play there? Do you still go for extract? You know, that's a really good question, Doc. Um, if you have the benefit of knowing that one of the competitors is down, if you've killed them or if you've able to been able to see it, 
I think then you can still be safe and picking up a lot of extract points. But outside of that, I think you're right. That's it's a it's a it's a tricky decision to make. I think mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. not if you're not comfortably one of the first two out, then you I would think me personally, I would definitely try and stick around for the whole twenty five minutes. Try and rack up. No, no way. Man, my, my Whoa, oh, next. But there's a PMC. <laughs> this is going so oh, no. well. Dex this getting into a so shootout. Well. That was, was a good 12-piece draw Let right there. It unfortunately went down. I only hit uh, him three too times. early, my friend. GG's. Okay, so what I'm going to say is cool. Blank was probably close it's enough to hear well, that. So I'm he's probably going to look for this. This is that opportunity where he might find out here that one of the competitors is already down. Let's see how he plays this. Yeah, you're definitely right, Spectre. He heard it. He's looking back, trying to get eyes on what that commotion was. What? We did see Blank uh, drop off one of his uh, batteries as well just a minute ago. Oh, it looks like not Raccoonzel a good time. and Angry Elmo getting a little bit close to each other here. We might have uh, some action. Yeah. Really? Oh. oh, oh, here come the shots. Nice use of a suppression grenade right there. Be able to throw that nade, keep their heads down so you could reposition, you can move out. Yeah, all, all three of our competitors now are within pretty close proximity to each other. I'm really interested in how this is going to turn out. Yeah, for our own selfish reasons, I love seeing this. Not so much for the competitors. <laughs> I'm sure they don't want to see other competitors, but... This is always fun to see different angles of the firefight. So you can see here, if you're familiar with Shoreline, you know Angry Elmo is hot on the trail of Raccoonzel. Raccoonzel seems to be a, a little bit more uh, full spectrum here. Trying to get wide angles, not necessarily focusing so much on the single player, but trying to get a really good grasp of everything going on on this side of the map, and maybe even breaking off towards the extract here. Angry, just trying to get eyes on. Still searching around. Switching over to Angry Elmo's audio now. Looks like he's still looking, trying to find Raccoonzel. Nice oh, wow. shot. There's another one. Two scabs down. What a great shot right through the eye oh, socket. Two scabs taken care of. Getting three kills was also one of the rules, right? Yeah. Yep, we'll hear him. Talk about Doc? needing those three kills before he can extract. I'm not planning on it. So now that he has those, good, so if they tell me to he can die, go ahead I'd and drop his die. remaining batteries and head towards the extract. I don't think I have a say. Looks <laughs> like he's going to go for it. The guy from over there hasn't come over. There's always a, definitely a spot of contention. You see that there's other batteries there. Realizing that other players, other competitors have dropped their uh, their items there. He must have just missed them. 
clearly trying to imagine to being a random PMC on this map or a player scav <laughs> right. and coming up here and like, why the hell are all these batteries here? Yeah, trying to piece that together like Sherlock Holmes. Like, what is going on? <laughs> but it's an obvious place to check for scavs. So now technically I just need one more scav. So listening to Blank here, talk about looking oh, for scavs. Definitely PMC. You planning both? Just you could hear his uh, battle mod in his ear, giving him some guidance as well. Uh, uh, big shout out to the battle so, mods. Still, li still listening to Blank here. Uh, Raccoonzel, Raccoonzel does seem to have doubled back a little bit. As far as I've counted, uh, so we may yeah. see some interaction here. Again, our competitors, they're okay, not I'm that far from each other. They seem to be staying pretty close to the center of the map here. One thing that has me worried, Spectre, is Raccoonzel has definitely been caffeinated for this raid, and she's just nonstop sprinting. Um, as, much as, I, as much as I enjoy that, I think right here you have to play it a little bit slower and not get caught off guard. That's the only thing I'm worried about, especially out in the open in the woods area like that. Oh, man. This game is game of the... I guess I'm black as the Akuma of the Razz next to Twitch. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! 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 And he takes him out! Solid kill. Now we see the Pilgrim here. Okay. So this is this is our third party player who killed one of our competitors and took all of his gear. No? So good retribution here, coming from Blank. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, Blank. That persistence paid off, definitely. Uh, keeping uh, keeping that high ground and just keeping eyes on. He knows he's going to try to pass through there at some point. I'm glad that paid off. Absolutely. He's been hunting that guy for a while. Like you said, it paid off well. One thing I love about it is... Did you guys just see? Oh. I think Raccoonzel jacked oh. the battery. <laughs> Did she Raccoonzel. pick up? Elmo got it, Elmo. Was he that close? Oh, she did. Oh wow. So just missing that fight. It happened so quick. We couldn't even get too into it. Not only does she kill him, she Man. takes his battery too. Insult to injury. <laughs> Cold hearted. I love it. You have 15 minutes left. One thing. One thing I love to see is the sportsmanship here. We saw Blank take out that third party. He realized that that was some competitor's gear that he had picked up, so he just dumped everything. I love seeing players that will try and respect their other competitor's gear mm -hmm. and try and hide Did it from them a little bit. No you know, that's a true testament to the Tarkov community as a whole. It's one of the best so communities out there uh, for reasons so like that. You know, we, we take care of our own. That's not in the rule set that you have to drop competitors' gear at all. That's definitely uh, just a respect thing, and uh, you know, they're they're looking out for each other, even though they're competing against each other. Okay, so at this point, we all know that two of our competitors are dead. Two are left, so the top two extract points are still open. They may not know that. Raccoonzel knows that one yeah. is dead. Blank knows that one is dead. I doubt they realize that both, that two competitors are down here. So, I'm honestly, I'm surprised that nobody's tried to extract yet. We might see Raccoonzel try to hit up uh, the boat pier. This time it's fine, see yeah? if she can extract that way. And maybe cop a few scab kills in the process. Yeah. She definitely needs these points. Absolutely. Those 10 points for the extraction will go a long way. Not only to pad her own score, but to deny her competitor those extra bonus points as well. Mm-hmm. 
Another point on the board, nice. I need to reposition shot. Chad, if you guys didn't know, Raccoon's uh, stream title is always aggressive ass burning. She's definitely been burning some ass in this raid. GG's indeed. <laughs> Finally see her able to get out there and do what she does best. Stack mm -hmm. bodies. It's ten for the first extraction, six for the second one way extract, third for three for the third, and one for the last one. Okay. Thanks. Still on the hunt though. She knows mm. the points that are at stake here. She's still choosing to stay in and try and get those kills. She does have just about 12 minutes left to try and stack up kills if she decides to. And coming back from negative score too, that's that, that, that that's tough. She definitely needed this. Get back into the positive, get back into the green. And there it is. She knows it's there. But not taking it. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Just checking that it's there. Do I just reset? And then might use the time? Remember but the 10 points for the first extract. Man. Yeah, that's that's going to cost her four points. Letting that so first Blank extract go. And Blank's going to be taking that, the, exactly. the, the 10 extra points. Oh, man. Fuck yeah. So that's really an eight-point swing in that decision, if you think about it. Ooh, that got really like interesting like quickly. And again, the, the, the competitors don't know what's happening with the other competitors. They don't know if they've already been extracted. And maybe she's thinking, you know, I've been here for a little while. Uh, I, I might, you know, I'm probably not the first one to leave. And so she wants to farm. But man, that's, uh, that's crazy. Indeed. Uh, we'll have to see. She she basically needs to get nine kills here to make it worth staying in raid. And that's kind of a big ask. On a map like Shoreline, where we're so spread out and mm -hmm. contact is so far and few between, she's really got her work cut out for her here to try and make up those points. We are under the 10 minute mark here. So she's, she does have quite a bit of time to run around the map. She does have time. It's a matter of, can she find it? Can she find the things to kill? We know she has mm -hmm. the skill. We know she has time. Can she have luck on her side and find things to kill? You know, Spectre, looking at the uh, the score sheet here, it looks like Blank had three scav kills for this event. Raccoonzel's currently sitting on seven. If she can cop a few more, that actually, that might balance out for missing out on the first uh, 10 extract points. She's still going to be getting the six, the six points for uh, the second because the other two are dead. That might work out if I'm looking at that correctly. That is true. While she's running through the woods here, I was just going to say, while she's running through the woods, I just want to take a second again, shout everybody out. Uh, big, big shout out to all the competitors. Make sure you go drop them some follows. Show them some love. Uh, big shout out to the battle mods as well as uh, everybody involved in the production to make this happen. Um, and if you guys like what you're seeing, make sure to, to drop a you know drop a follow, drop some love in chat, and uh, yeah, appreciate you guys for being here. 
Doc, you mentioned earlier about her bringing this red dot in. She doesn't need a powered optic. All she needs is right. a red dot. She's just shooting scabs from way off in the distance. It's insane. Another thing Confidence I've noticed is key, though. here. Absolutely. She has that for sure. Strong competitor. She is also, I would really like to see how much distance she has covered in this raid because she has been non-stop the whole time from one mm -hmm. corner of the map to the other. Who knows, this might bring back a trend of using the red dots. You don't need to see their nose hairs to be able to get the land the shot, you know? <laughs> As she just proved, getting that that had to have been at least a hundred meters. Oh yeah. Я просто думаю, что мне с тамула надо было, наверное, взять еще один за 6 Так больше, что один аккум уже не так страшно бегать. Такой, uh, Not the first time плохой, that, that I've wished I spoke Russian. Right? Really handy right about now. Same. Well, guys, I'm going to cut in real quick while we are, uh, while we got a little bit of lull in the action. Guys, if you haven't gone over to Evasion on the socials, make sure you do go over and follow all of the socials at Evasion underscore GG on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And if you want to check out the VODs and watch back any of this so you can maybe learn a few tips or tricks, make sure you head over to youtube.com slash Evasion underscore GG where all of the VODs are loaded. All right, casters, back to you. Man, Rakunzel's got some comfy insoles with how much she's been running around the map. What uh what kinda what kind of shoes do you think she's working with there, Doc? Uh New Balance is hundred percent. They have the best arch support. Uh that's why they're favored by dads. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> One of the Adix. She is certainly using the full clock here. She's taking her time mm -hmm. to make sure she has killed everything that is still alive. And for the last five minutes or so, it's actually been really quiet. Not a lot of explosions, not a lot of gunshots. It's just a walk, it's a walk on the beach at this point. You know, um, we, that's kind of how we felt on that interchange right there for a while too. And then from out of nowhere, PMC pops up. So true. Can't ever let your guard down here. Okay, so she may be heading towards the extract now. Um, unfortunately, I don't think she got that many kills since she decided to stay in the raid from the time that she checked the extract. So, you know, it's a gamble when you make that decision to stay in or not. Uh, but... Thankfully, she did pick up quite a few points nonetheless in this raid. So she's really um, improved her position on the scoreboard here. Definitely. Looks like she got uh, nine scav kills this raid. That is the most out of uh, the, the competitors. Oh, now they show up. <laughs> yes! One last nice quick kill on her way out. I love it. He just peeks his head around. You did say goodbye! <laughs> GG's, Rakunzel. Rakunzel looking to blow another kiss to another scav that wants to say goodbye. Okay, we're done. GG's! I love it.
I love her attitude. Oh yeah. A lot of and fun. that that she does. She has yeah, so yeah, she has one of the best attitudes. I mean, she is also a Sherpa with Battle State Games. So if you make sure you are in the Sherpa Discord, maybe you'll uh, get her help going around some maps. Now, interesting point of note, you did bring the sub specter. She decided to stay. She would have been the first one out if she would have taken that extract. She would have beat Blank there. She didn't, though, and she only picked up three kills. So the points, she actually ended up losing a point, and that is a gamble that you end up taking. Do you think she maybe should have just used that time to push towards the other extract? I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Uh, we have the benefit of knowing that she would have made more points by going ahead and getting out. But again, she's a strong competitor. She was starting from a big deficit. So I'm sure from her perspective, she was probably better off to stay in, cover the rest of the map, soak up some scav kills. And the RNG wasn't really on her side there. She didn't get any scavs in construction. She didn't get any at um, weather station. So she very well could have overcome the points from the difference in the extract. So it's just, again, they're having some poor luck today in these raids. So they, they truly are. And if we take Rakunzel, for example, with poor luck, she has one PMC kill on the day in the one map where you don't want to have a PMC kill. <laughs> and it gave her negative points. So th that bad luck has kind of, you know, it, it continued through most of the competition, but it does look like maybe she broke it with that last map. Doc J, going into this last map, like, what do you think? It, it, if you're behind, what's your game plan? What are you thinking in your head? Definitely trying to just make up the difference as much as you can, uh, especially going in with this last one. Forget everything that just happened. This is a this is a new raid, new events, and uh, go in there with a fresh mind and just try to own, do all the objectives, plant your smokes. Um, yeah, and I think the the biggest thing is don't die. If you have to change your play style a little bit, just don't die. Just don't die. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that updated scoreboard, see exactly where our competitors stand. It looks like Blank has jumped out in lead, was in second place, has moved into first with 67 points. Angry Elmo TV in second now with 57.5. Rakunzel actually going from a negative point into third after that raid with 21 and Dex getting dropping, I, I, not dropping, staying at the same 16.5. Unfortunate round for Dex was chasing one of the other competitors trying to go for a kill and ran into a PMC and got dropped. And that's just Tarkov. It, it happens. It, it happens a lot. You know, it, oh, man, I, oh, it, it's really unfortunate. You know, Raccoon, uh, Raccoonzel did end up getting the most points last raid with 26. So we can see nice. that really, you know, propelled her up into the uh, points and not being so negative. Oh, man. But that does lead us into our last map of the day. And one that I personally am uh, like, I, God, I love this map. I love this. I, I don't love this map. I don't love playing it, but I love it for the competition. <laughs> because it brings us some of the most interesting dynamics of the entire day because it's bombs over reserve. The, the crazy thing about this is as another competitor, you're seeing smokes at all of these locations because that's what they're tasked with. They have to throw some smokes in specific locations on specific rooftops. I always think about the other people on the map, the, the non-competitors, the scav players that are in here, just seeing all of these smokes bellowing from the roof. Spectre, like, what, what would go through your mind if you were one of those players? I would be freaked out for sure. I would be <laughs> really weirded out, especially if I saw who was throwing the smoke, because we'll see in a second. <laughs> these guys are chonky. And you see them throwing smoke grenades up on the rooftops of buildings. I'd be dipping out. I'd be getting out of that mess. I don't want nothing to do with whatever's going on there. <laughs> like multiple Very... people throwing them as well. It's not just one person doing it. So you're not like, oh, that guy's trolling. No, like half the map is throwing smokes on these buildings. They're going to be thinking like, is the Halloween event still going? Like what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Doc, go ahead and uh, let's, let's tell the competitors what's happening over on this map for this competition. Alrighty, so bombs over reserve. They're going to be loading in as a group. Uh, reserve daytime. They're going to have 30 minutes. PMCs are tasked with placing a TP200 
TNT brick in the control room of the underground bunker and marking the listed five rooftops with smoke. You must be on the rooftop. Uh, you are placing the smoke grenade on. Their loadout, they can bring any weapon, armor, the Zabralo, Thor Carrier, and Alton or Rise T helmets, any rig and backpack, two stims, two grenades max, five smoke grenades, and of course the TP-200. Of course, no grenade launchers, Mark 18s, Reap IRs, Fleers, T7s, and or run-throughs. Smoke location is Black Pond, White Pond, King, White Knight, and Rook. The TP location is going to be the control room uh, of the underground bunker. The points are as follows. Scav Raider and Guard Kills are one point. PMC Kill with no tag is one point. PMC Kill with the tag is three points. Task points are two point each. Killing Glucar will give you five points. Extraction is five points. And Extraction Bonus... You get double extract points if you activate and use the bunker hermetic door. Mm -hmm. And that's very that. This is one of the reasons I I love this map because this has been an ongoing theme here at Evasion for us with this map is the double extract points by using the hermetic door. So they have to go over, they have to hit the switch, and then run over to the extract, and then they get double extract points. Now, if the switch has already been flipped, they just have to go to it, maybe, you know, throw it the bird, wave at it, whatever, and then head towards the extract. Mm -hmm. But when that happens, that rings a dinner bell, not only to the other competitors, but we all know how scavs are on this map. As soon as that alarm starts going, they become the, they become golem. They want all of the preciouses <laughs> from everybody, and they will kill anything that they can get. Spectre, <laughs> so if you heard that and you were a competitor, you heard that switch flip, what would be your strategy at that moment? Um, That's interesting. Thinking in terms of the competition, I know generally when I'm on reserve and I hear that go off, I want to push over to the hermetic doors as quickly as possible to try and either catch a PMC that's going there to extract or farm raiders. Um, for this, it might be a little different for me because again, we're all wearing super heavy armor. We're running slower than normal. Um, I don't know, you know, depending on what time that happens, if it's early in the raid, I could be pretty confident that it's not one of my fellow competitors going to extract. So I might keep my distance then. If it's later in on the raid, and I'm thinking that maybe somebody's playing at all their objectives or maybe somebody's trying to get out. If I can get there quickly to cut them off, I'm definitely going to go camp it. I know that's despicable, but in this, it's a competition. I got to do what I got to do, mm -hmm. right? So if I can get there quick, I'm probably going to go try and secure it, lock it down. If not, then I'm probably going to stay focused on my objectives. Um, I know in the NA competition, very few people hit all of their objectives there were a lot of points left on the board so me going into this i think that would be one of my focuses is making sure i hit every single objective and try and check as many boxes on this as possible yeah now when we come and we talk about you know two of our competitors are you know that they're trying to get into that first or second spot so third and fourth are very much trying to get into first and second because first and second move on to next weekend so if you are in first and second is gluhar on the table for you doc do you go for him do you try to get those five points 100 percent, yes i uh, everything i think i would say everything's on the table at this point you got to bring it all I um, don't leave anything behind. Like this is the this is the time kicking into a uh, you know fifth gear, sixth gear, depending on what car you're driving. I know this is uh this is the EU one. I uh, make sure that you just you, you get it done. What we've seen in the past, we see this common commonly with uh, bombs over reserve, is that you have the best intentions for getting uh all the smoke locations down. Like that's it, it's not like you're avoiding it. It's just you get bogged down in a building, you get bogged down in a location. And that's going to slow you down getting to these locations. Um, and that's that's what's rough. So you have to you have to think: Is it better to peel off and just say, you know, I'm not I'm not going to deal with this firefight right now. I need to get this done first. Or do you do you sit up there and wait it out and try to get those kills and just plow through it to make sure you can get it done? It's uh, yeah, I, I like the dynamic and uh, there's so many questions. I'm I'm curious to see how they how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Now, Spectre, talking about the underground, because they do have to go to the underground to put the TP-2000 down. So so we know that they have to go under, the, or I'm sorry, TP-200 down, TNT block. They do have to go under there. 
they they have to like we know that that is a place of contention we know players love going into that underground area so do you just push under there try to drop something get out as fast as possible or do you try to pick up as many points as you can and fight in that heavily contested area i think it would probably depend on where I was on the scoreboard. Um, if I needed a lot of kills and I was going Hail Mary, go for broke, I probably would push straight down there. Outside of that, if I'm in a comfortable position, I would probably hang back and wait to go down there because I'm going to get some points for delivering that. I know I've had some really, really rough, weird engagements down there. So... I would probably try and wait until the initial surge through that area is cleared out. And I don't have to be worried about being pushed from multiple angles all at once. So mm -hmm. if I'm feeling okay about my position on the scoreboard, I'm probably going to sit back a little bit and wait. Yeah. And, and this is the last map of the day. This is the last chance for all of these competitors to try to push into first and second. Because, I mean, after this, this is it. You leave it all, and, and or you take it all. And we will see some very interesting gameplay. My, my biggest thing is also weapon loadouts, what we can expect from these competitors. But, casters, let's find out now. Go ahead and take it away. Well, this time, I'm going to fight. All right, so we are loading into our final raid on reserve, listening to Dextravaganza here. And, ooh, interesting spawn here just outside the K buildings. Now again, something. our competitors will have one minute of no contact before the raid is declared hot, and then it's a free-for-all, anything's game. So they're gonna spread out a little bit here. We may see a little bit of delay on individual streams, but they have all loaded in together. Dex deciding to rub his body all over the uh, barbed wire to start, before the raid just is to make sure that he's awake party. and ready to go. Uh, I do like the positioning or the pathing and trying to go around the bunkers right. and maybe skirt up that direction. Well, hopefully that'll play out because I know that does leave you a little bit exposed. Yeah, we'll see if he has a PMC here at the B spawn. Here. Here. This also puts him near one of his objectives, one of the rooftops that he needs to mark, and potentially an opportunity to pick up a kill here. Interesting optic choice from uh, Dex. I'll actually like to see that, uh, just not going with what the meta is, going with what you're comfortable with. Doesn't matter, you know, as long as it gets the job done. Absolutely. Good point. And uh, very interesting considering he's running a Bravo. So he has some options to mount on top of the Bravo, but instead deciding to go with the mm -hmm. angled mount. And going back to uh, Bunny's point about what loadout you'd bring in, I, I think it would behoove them to definitely bring in extra uh, uh, extra armor, backup armor, backup face shield, and or helmets. Um, don't worry about packing mags. Bring mags. But you don't want to be having to load uh, ammo in your mags. Uh, you just, just swap them out. Even if you have to have a backpack full of mags. <laughs> yeah, and uh, maybe having something that's really good for you know medium to long range and being able to switch to a sidearm, like we saw with Dex, uh, for your CQB. Because here, like, this is... Oh, Dex getting suppressed here. Uh, so addressing the question in chat, wrong. all four competitors think, have loaded uh, into the raid together. Um, uh, okay. It looks like we may have Should a hang up on somehow? Angry Elmo. So we'll get some clarification uh, on that, but they, they should now. all be loading into the same raid. We may get a now. delay, may have to requeue yeah, a couple yeah, guys. Raid is hot. So as soon as we know for more information about that chat, if we have to uh, reset or what the game plan is, we will let you know. Oh yeah, we need to It is Tarkov. So games. we know technical oh. difficulties happen. Happen. Sometimes you get hung up and yeah, can't make it into a raid. Uh, Elmo is not into mm -hmm. the raid. Uh, we may have to reset. Okay. Waiting. So Dextravaganza decides he's going to wait for that decision before he goes ahead and marks his objective in case they need to dip out and reset. It looks like it looks like we are going to be uh, prepared to reset here uh, just to make sure everyone has a fair go. This is our last uh, event. We want to make sure we're, that we're set. And things like this happen, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, extract somewhere. Okay. Can uh, someone gonna turn reset. on the Wii U? Ask in, in chat or in the thing. Ask people. Can they turn off on that extract? What do you mean? Oh! Oh! Um, no, the the uh, the extract. He's uh, just carrying on the conversation. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I amazing. love Dex. Not phased at all. I was just wondering if someone can turn on the alarm. He's like, sorry, I was rudely interrupted by a uh, scab. Oh. <laughs> that was a player. Oh <laughs> yeah, my god. I can't really ask for them. Uh, two of <laughs> what us was that player are not doing? in the raid, so... Strange. Uh, what? Okay. I'll, I'll try uh, to... Poor little Timmy. Just standing yeah. down below. Hey, mister! Mister! I would say no bag extract. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. I haven't true. seen that, man. Thank you. Holy cow. Thank you. Sorry no, for this. No, no, a bit no, confusing. No, no. <laughs> It's taco. I'll grab the important stuff and interesting and no bag decision. I've noticed her do that a couple of times now. Raccoon's all playing with her more smokes. overlay setting or um, what was the term? Her graphic settings to try and give her a little more brightness in the dark areas. I'm just counting on no one. Yeah, and sw switching it as you go as well. I'm a nice guy, you know. I'm a nice. <laughs> We all know. The Rakuzel's here to take your soul. Sorry for that language. I can't speak Swedish, Nick. Okay. Again, chat, just a big shout out to all the uh, uh, competitors today. Make sure you go give them a follow. Follows are free. Drop them a GG. They put on a heck of a show today. Um, despite being Tarkov on multiple occasions, still in uh, great moods, having fun, which is this is what this is all about. Um, I do want to give another big shout out to the, the battle mods, uh, especially the head battle mods. Uh, Brian, much love. Uh, I know Garland oh, as well. Lobby, uh, thank you guys for everything <laughs> no, you do. Making this thing run smoothly, helping out the the production and casters so much, um, we couldn't we we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be as successful doing this without you guys. So thank you, thank you. Okay, so again, we are going to reset this final match here. We had two competitors not make it into raid, so Dex has gone ahead and dropped his bag. He's extracted. Raccoonzel is heading down to D two. So as soon as we can get all four of our competitors. Queued back up and loading into raid. We'll come back and get our reserve raid underway. Damn. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some fun and some chit chat in between. It's going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss this one. I promise you. Doc, do you remember? Do you remember what happened on the championship? Yes. Oh my gosh. My body remembers. That was insane. Dude, for those of you who were not here, for the NA Season 5 solo competition, the championship first place was decided by the bonus points for the Hermetic Door Extract. It literally came down to, what, like five seconds he had? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get I wish out. we could pull up the was a matter of that because that was so crazy. Yeah. Yes. It, it, came it was down like to, to it just... was either. It was either he he made the extract and he got first place, or he missed it mm -hmm. and he missed out on that first place prize. It was yep. intense. What were we? What were we calling it, buddy? It was like the the five hundred dollar sprint or something like that. Something like that. Or, yeah. It was. Yeah. It, it was something it was along insane. those lines. <laughs> it was. It was so close because I mean, within well, oh God, those just seconds made it one of the most entertaining events that we we've had the opportunity to watch or cast guys yep don't go anywhere though because it is just going to take a moment for the competitors to reset unfortunately two of the competitors did not connect to the servers so it happens we've all played with people we know that sometimes our friends get left behind and we have to go back for them yeah it, it, it is it is what it is but we'll get everybody loaded into that so but while we have a moment, I do want to take this to remind everybody that we will have continued competition all weekend. 
So if you are enjoying this and you want to watch some more tomorrow on November 6th at 2 p.m. EDT, 6 p.m. UTC, British Ubba, Tangerine Rabbit, Rabbit, Acid Fire, and Gary TV all competing tomorrow, followed by Sunday, Oddities, Walker, Mr. You know Walker himself, Taze F- FPS, and one of my favorite people, Untorious. Great, great competitors. Now, I am excited about Sunday's event because, you know, we have Walker and Untorious in that, and uh, I, I just like both of those guys a lot, you know, and, and Walker mm-hmm. Walker says he's going to come in last place. We'll, we'll see Sunday. I, he, he's better than he plays, like, until uh, better than he lets on. <laughs> but that is a full weekend of competitions. Don't tell him I said that, though. Don't tell him I think he's good at the game. He doesn't. He, he doesn't need to know yeah, that. And him, also for everybody we in we the in, <laughs> <laughs> Also, everybody in the NA, don't forget, Saturday night, we fall back. So our times will change to EST. So everything will be adjusted a little bit from that. So no, uh, Sunday will be starting at 2 p.m. EST for us, but that does become 7 p.m. UTC. So it will be an hour later start time if you are overseas in Europe. Same start time for everybody here in America. Oh, man. The competition today has been some of the... There's been some up and downs today, gentlemen. Like, we've seen seen some very, very big up and downs. And... Whenever we have these kind of pauses, I I always have to remind myself that, hey, these guys are competitors. We vet every single one of these folks that comes out here. And it's hard to say, though, like when you sign up for one of these competitions, you don't really know how you're going to react because it is a straight up competition. Doc J, like when you you've competed in the past, what, what is going through your head during these competitions? What's going through my head is absolutely chaos. And uh, yeah, it's hard to filter it, filter it out. Um, yeah, you have the nerves, you know, you, you, you want to perform um, and you just, you want to make sure you're doing it right and effectively. Uh, for me, when I competed, I was just so low on rubles and funds and didn't have many loadouts. So I was also in the back of my head thinking like, I can't die because I can't afford it. Like I, I'll, I'll be rocking a Ketter, you know, for my next map if I if I don't play this smartly. Um, so yeah, I, I, as you see, the, a lot of them they, they they prepared, you know, they prepared for these. They they look forward to it, so they're sitting on a decent amount of rubles and kits and everything, um, which is super smart. But yeah, and then just map knowledge and uh, the the tournament knowledge of what you're supposed to do, looking at the rules beforehand, going through it in your head, what pathing you might take, uh, and just to be able to get all those objectives done. Yep. Now, me and Spectre, we've actually duoed uh, together during one of these competitions. Spectre, we both know also kind of the, the mentality that you have to have. This is an extremely long competition. So when you're within this last hour of competition and you've been playing for a long time today, what do you do to keep your brain going and trying to stay on topic and on par with everything? Uh energy drinks lots of energy drinks <laughs> i know one of the most exhausting experiences for me was that competition it is so intense uh just trying to be laser focused on what you're doing trying to accomplish your tasks uh the nerves are getting to you i was spent at the end of that competition so i was definitely chugging down some energy drinks i was definitely trying to harness all of my energy into staying on task and focused and driven it's it's a blast to compete in these it's a ton of fun but it is grueling it is an endurance event for sure it it truly truly is yeah i wanted to bring it up because i know we were talking about it last time we were casting is that uh because all the craziness is going on and it's such a good time that it flies by so fast and you look back you're like i don't even remember like what the heck just happened you know, it's just mm-hmm. all a blur. Uh, you know, you just you just get so focused and you're in the zone. Your your eyes dry out like raisins because you've just been so hyper focused. Uh, but it's all it's yeah. all a good time though. Yeah, it truly is. I mean, I after we got done casting trios last weekend, I I was like, somebody asked, well, how was it? I was like, it was amazing. What happened? I was like, 
I, I don't remember. I just kind of blacked <laughs> yeah. out. Like, and, and that's what happens for these competitors. They, you just Your brain just kind of blacks everything out, and, and you just kind of go through the competition. So hopefully we, we see everybody focus up in this last map. They did have a little bit longer break, obviously having to reset or resending them. But that's what makes all of them great competitors is because they can stay focused. While we take a moment to get them prepared and they are being, you know, getting ready to go back in, I want to say once again, everybody head over to the Evasion website, evasion.gg. So that way, if you are looking for any kind of information, you can find it about the solo battles that we are doing today, the duos and the trios that just passed. Hopefully we get that, you know, another set of that going because that was a lot, a lot of fun. Also, you can find a calendar for all of our information about about when every single competition is, what time they start, what's happening each and every weekend. Also find information about Team Evasion and the merch store because there is some awesome, awesome merch over at evasion.gg slash merch. Pick yourself up a hat or jersey today. Oh, man. and if you're in, if you're in, you know, Europe or, or America, it's getting that winter time getting really cold there's some very nice jerseys or uh, hoodies that you could pick up also to try to stay warm but with that being said i do want to take one more moment again and thank everybody here at evasion from production hotel bravo behind the scenes to my fellow casters doc j and the wonderful specter 21 you can find all of us here on twitch Almost every single day, Doc J's over there. And also, I want to go ahead and big a, give a huge shout out to Battlestate Games for sponsoring this season's prize money. Solos 3750, duos 4500, and that big prize that just passed 1800 or $18,000, not 100,000, bunny. $18,000 was given away during the trios event to all of our champions. A lot of money. Thank you so much, BSG. So Doc J, you can find him over there on twitch.tv slash Doc J. Spectre at the same, twitch.tv slash Spectre21. Go show both of those beautiful men some love. And then I am Unfluffy Money, your host for today. Oh, I think uh, I think our competitors are getting close to that point of getting ready. Man, it, it, you know, it's hard. It's hard having a reset like that, especially for Dex. Dex picked up a kill there, but... When I, whenever I had a reset, first thing I always say to myself as as a com competitor is that never happened. You just put that out of your mm -hmm. mind and you go, nope, let's do this. We're ready to go. What about you, Spectre? Yeah, I think you you made a really good point there. It's important to stay focused. Um, it can be hard to not get the wind taken out of your sails to lose your groove. So everything you can do to just stay focused, not let yourself relax, stay in the competition is really important. So it looks like we're good. We have all four of our competitors getting in now. We're good to go. So we shouldn't have another reset. We are listening to Raccoons Raccoonzel right now. Um, very interesting spawn this time. In the bunker close to the barracks facility. So this could lead to some intense action early on. Yeah, you can see Raccoonzel thinking about it. She's kind of scanning and thinking, like, okay, which way do I want to go? And as they're Again, dispersing, I just the want first... to bring it up. I know Aloha said, uh, evasion underwear when? I agree. I think evasion under would be awesome for how sweaty these competitions are. <laughs> So blank going ahead and marking his first objective really quick here. You know, I do like it. the quicker you could get these down without being contested gives you a lot more time to kind of roam to where wherever spots you are comfortable with to be able to, you know, get off some kills, get some extra points. I think you'll dominate the map a little bit more if you're able to get these things done and have the rest of the time to just kind of do your own thing. That is a really good point. Looks like uh, Raccoon. Oh, angry Elmo getting into it. Oh no, Raiders, stick it out. You got this Elmo, you got this. Oh wow. Stacking bodies, let's go. 
GG's Elmo. Man, they came in hot and heavy. Hate us taking care of. If you all have not fought raiders since I... the AI update, no. they are crazy now. They are not to be trifled with. They're very aim buddy. Sword. They will wreck your oh, world. Not so GG's to Angry Elmo there. They just broke out of the mental ward over at the resort, and now they're just running loose, going doing crazy scab things. <laughs> There's shots and shit's over there. Okay. I like his choice on weapons too, bringing that backup MP7 for CQB. Excellent choice. Absolutely. We see Angry Elmo there going ahead and deploying his TP200, so he's got that check mark. Switching over here to Blank and Dextravaganza to different locations, but in very close proximity to each other. So we could see some competitor on competitor action here. Dex jumping off the cliff saying, you know what? I do want to, I, do, I want to fight with shin splints. That is fine. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Uh, what? Oh, Dex. Uh, what? I'm a cuck. Oh, Holy cow! Sitting there waiting for that. My jaw just hit the ground. Holy cow! That did not just happen. Oh, that's rough. <sighs> that PMC was sitting there waiting for that very thing to happen. Beanie boy. Looks like Blank has a zoomy boy here. He's watching. Yeah, I was just going to say, he's fighting Children of the Corn. He came by real quick. Hopefully he stacks up that body, though. Raccoon's on the bottom right. So we're listening to Blank here. Searching for this player he thought, saw run across. Not sure if it's an AI or PMC. But it was quick. Whatever it was, it's in a hurry. Do I fight this shit? I'd say drop your smoke. Drop your smoke first. And then if you run into him again, take it. But again, the, the, the key here, the importance is getting all of your uh, objectives done. Then you'll have the freedom to do whatever you want. Oh. One's running right there. Good eyes. I want to push these stairs. Nicely done, Blank. Scab's bottom floor is just aggroed him. So we hear him talking about somebody is engaging Scabs here, still in his building. So he's got to find that player. Switching over to Angry Elmo in the bottom right. Also in one of the barracks buildings. They're gonna have to keep their wits about them here. Oh, oh good. Was that a PMC or a glue car? It has to be someone in this one. That was a mute. It was it happened so fast I didn't even see. Okay, so he's found he's found sure. Dex's body here. <clears throat> Send that gun before. Hey GG's again, Dex. By any chance, is this a competitor? Yes, it is. Oh! Hey. Some people... Wait, did they trade there? There did were two they? bodies in the stall there. This is gone. With the PMC. Oh, we need to figure out what happened there. Right? Look at all the these players! There's so many PMC bodies! <laughs> he was the one that was over here. We can full fucking send. With a bit of confidence. So we have Angry Elmo up on the rooftop deploying yeah, his smoke. One. Blank just coming back inside. Lots of dead players there. Lots of action is taking place in this raid so far. One's dead. There's only three in raid, which is good. 
Spectre, did did Blank get off that smoke when he was up there? When he got that kill? I'm trying to remember. You know, I'm not sure. I don't remember seeing it. He may not have. I was so have. just infatuated with the, the rooftop kill of that PMC, and I missed if he'd uh, tossed it down. I uh, know. It was, it was pretty intense there. So we have Angry Elmo here on the main screen. We're Kroonzul in the bottom right. I'm going to go check the... Check the scoreboard here. Blank does have three smokes planted already. King, White Pawn, and Black Pawn. So it would appear that he did drop his smoke while he was up there. Angry Elmo just clear, clearing this bottom floor here. Oh, oh no! Did you what was that? Where did that come from? I um, it might have came from the left. Again, the non wow! That guy had a crazy angle, head top of head. Man. That. I. What? Not smart. So this is Raccoonzel's chance to stack up some points, climb the leaderboard. Uh, I'm gonna need a minute after that. Right? The one tap through the Alton. Goodness gracious. And he was doing so good clearing, too. Checking his corners, peeking out across. Man. The extra points by drinking vodka in red. In, in Nikita's favor for his birthday. So, Blank did Negative just deploy his fourth smoke grenade. So he has one more smoke grenade to deploy and still his TP200 in the control room. Raccoonzel going ahead and placing her TNT in the control room. I feel like train station is going to be fucking juiced with PMCs, Jet. Did you notice how the guy fucking role playing as High Herman was wearing a KS shotgun? <laughs> Pro tips don't get shot. True. <clears throat> Full sends working so far, chat. I feel like everyone's creeping about. I mean, half the map is destroyed right from the get go. Bodies absolutely spread out everywhere. There are a lot of dead players in this raid already. So I do want to remind everybody that you can see all of the past events from Evasion on the YouTube channel, Evasion underscore GG. If you'd like to go back and recap on today's event while we're running, you can click on the icon for the channel, go to videos and review the VOD if you want to get caught up. And on that note as well, uh, Spectre, if you guys see any cool moments or any highlights, feel free to clip them as well. I know what I need to all the way up, but I did it just in case. Absolutely. Going to blank oh, on the big yeah. screen here, planting his last smoke grenade. So he has all of his smokes placed. Basement. We can hear him talking about planting right. his TNT now. I, get, I don't get minus points for killing scabs and shit, right? No, yeah, definitely point. not, Blank. Kill everything. One point. The minus now, points, that's you, only for the uh, the rat run on customs. Absolutely. For those of you who want to follow along with the rules, exclamation point rules, will take you to the Evasion GG website, where you can see a list of the competitors and the rule set for each map in the Season 5 solo competition. If, if I've done it so quickly. Raccoon's all laying down the lead. But I... Press button, do you reckon? Get the fuck out after I've done Dane. Hitting the drugs, hitting the stems, keeping herself in the fight. Oh, chill. Ooh, he hears him. About 19 minutes. Good shot. I'm fucking chill. 
Where did he come from? Holy cow. Sneaky scabs these days. Just back there behind the truck. Yo, just checking out the exhaust manifold, can you know? My auto model, or can I change? <laughs> Hey, PMCS, gotta make sure our equipment's running. Mate, I'm 100% going to die We're fucking rolling. So listening to Raccoonzel here talking to her battle mod. Unusual. And then Blank just reminiscing on the raid and what's transpired. Yeah, why not some pick up the Mark 47? Nice little come up there. <clears throat> you have been dead most of the time, to be honest. <laughs> Perfect time for some agua. Make sure you're hydrated. Now, this. Oh. Blank just got your ricochet? I'm hearing shit still. Battle State Games coming in with a massive raid. Much love. ESG, much love. Appreciate you. Big hype. Big thanks to BSG for the massive raid and for the huge support of Season 5 Evasion Tournaments. Thank you all so much. Hello? No, okay, okay. Hi. Welcome in, everybody. We are on reserve for our final competition of tonight. For the first oh. stage of the so EU account. Season 5 solo battles. We have currently... What did he say? Uh, we're just I down to the two competitors left in raid now. Unfortunately, we had some... Some early deaths from two of our competitors, but we still have two in. We're watching Blank here on the main screen, who has planted all of his objectives now. And is making his way through the map to rack up some extra kills, score some extra points. Raccoonzel as well, making her way through the objectives with only one smoke grenade left to plant. Can I just throw on the floor when I'm in there? Yeah. And man, was it spicy there right off the start? Yeah. Make sure it was the other side of glass. That's sweet, babe. Absolutely. Lots, lots of kills in this so... raid so far. <clears throat> we did have some raiders. We've had some good action in this raid. Maximum pointage, chat. Chat, you can see the uh, the timer, the bottom oh, left there. Fun. Getting up to uh, 16 minutes left in raid. Plenty of time. And now that they're uh, completing all of their objectives, they have a lot more freedom to go around and hunt and kind of decide what their next play is going to be. Stamina. Regen. Those of you in chat, those of you just joining us, if you'd like to go tune in, please go check out our competitors today. We have Angry Elmo, Raccoonzel, Blank, and Dextravaganza. Please go check them out. Drop them a follow. Show them some love. Drop them some emotes. Raccoonzel laying down the lead. I think she was shooting at Blank there. Blank guy. Flipping the switch, wanting to get the heck out of Dodge. Ooh. Ooh. I'm just going to get high ground. Can she catch him before he gets Trying to get him. eyes on. Oh. That scab He's going to have to cross here in the open as well. Man, if she would have stayed up there just Running. another half a second, she might have seen him. Running for these bonus points. Blank absolutely dominating this map, this competition, and about to secure a lot more points if he can successfully extract from the hermetic door here. And what's one more? Exactly. A spare point for your trouble, sir. And just as a side note, Chad, uh, if Raccoonzel did want to use Bunker Hermetic to extract right now, she would have to go to the button first before heading to uh Dexville. nice oh, kill by raccoonzel, raccoonzel. wow Return. Always 
see someone finish a quest that you can keep going for. Yeah, yeah finally. Been, Come on, uh, player scouts and extra. Like, found any squads, Bill. Jeez. Good call by Blank here. Taking it slow, checking his corners, not wanting to throw these bonus points away. Have the grenade check for any campers rather than you. I like it. Whoa. GG's blank. All the roof smoked. TNT planted. Bomb dispute. Right, I was going to say bomb diffuse, but that's the wrong one, isn't it? All right. Full GG's seven. blank. Successfully extracting with his bonus points. Putting up a huge score for this raid. Now it's down to Raccoonzel. She is our last one left in raid. Let's see how many points she can soak up. She does have 14 minutes left. If she wants to try and stay in raid, get some more kills, put some more points on the board. For a player that has been trying to come back from a big deficit, that would be a really mm -hmm. good idea for her to use this full clock to her advantage. I was going to say, based on what she was doing uh, on Shoreline, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if she does soak up as much time as she can trying to stack some more points. She's going to be on the hunt I think she here. will have to. Absolutely. Looking for those those player scavs. I was about to say, she's going to have to be careful. As the player scavs start to spawn in, they can they can cause you some, some stressful moments. Players popping up out of nowhere, looking like scavs. And there she gets her final smoke grenade marked. Her final objective. So she also has completed all of her objectives here. She's got a few kills under her belt. Let's see if she can stack up some more bodies and maybe even get her own set of bonus points for the extract. Uh, should I put the dog tags in my uh, gamma? Will it count? The dog tag points will count if they uh, if you extract them. Uh, and if I die, it doesn't matter, yeah? Yeah, if she dies, it doesn't matter. They, well, they still they will still count. They will still count, but only the ones you killed. Okay. Guys, while we have a moment here and a lull in the actions, let's go ahead and uh, I want to want I would like to once again direct you guys over to all of Evasion socials at Evasion underscore GG on Twitter, Evasion underscore GG on Instagram, TikTok, and find all of the VODs for Evasion over at YouTube.com slash Evasion underscore GG. Man, it was really hard for me to get that out. And once again, a huge shout out and much love to Battle State Games for sponsoring this season's prize money, dropping us a lot, a lot of money to give to these competitors that put on an amazing show week in and week out for you. Once again, much love to Battle State Games and to everybody over at Evasion. Guys, back to you, casters. Agreed, 100% bunny. No, I've said it before, but thank you so much, BSG, for not only making a game that we all love and are addicted to, but also supporting what we do over here at Evasion. You guys are awesome. Man, she's really searching. She's trying. She's trying her best. Find any scabs, any movement. She can tally up some points. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I think all the PMCs are pretty well dead at this point. We had a lot of mm -hmm. engagements early on, so she is really just at the mercy of the map. Um, let's see, she may be heading over to flip the switch, maybe get some raider kills on her way out. What do you think, Doc? What would your play be here with 10 minutes left in this raid, the opportunity to stack up some points? How would you go about this? 10 minutes left, uh, I think I would definitely start preparing, flipping that switch, and then maybe going on the hunt. Maybe uh, using the, the, the using the Wii Woo as a fishing technique almost. See what you can see, especially if you get some high ground. Kind of uh, plan it out, and then uh, take your attack there and start heading towards Extract. I like that. Um, I don't think she would have time to hit it twice at this point. I think she'd be too close on time there, but... Um, 
damage. Oh. Whoa. What have we here? That was really good response time on her, too. Fingers crossed for a PMC. Make it in. Ooh, it's thick, Ooh. whatever it is. Oh, I'm seeing tracers. <laughs> if, if it's not a PMC, it is definitely a scav that has soaked up some of this PMC loot. So regardless, she's up against a, a force to be reckoned with here for sure. And it looks like she is going to try and dip out and head for that extract. I like her technique of hitting the button, skirting around, and then throwing the grenade. Thinking that they're, they're prop, most likely, they're going to push. They know that she was in there, she just hit the button, she couldn't have gone far. So she's going to turn around, throw that nade, just to kind of cover her movement and her retreat back. Very smart. Definitely, and very good pathing there. Good safe, wide route. Rather than trying to cut straight through the buildings and expose herself to an ambush, she's taking a really good route here to make sure she's going to safely get to that extract. Just double checking that she's ready to go. Okay, so once again, if she successfully extracts from the Bunker Hermetic door, she will get a 10-point bonus here. If she does that, she will be neck and neck with the points that Blank took out of this raid. And potentially, if she gets a couple more kills on the way out, she could be the highest scoring competitor in this particular map. The question is, will that push her for, far enough to be able to land that spot to move on? Very curious to see that. Good kill. Nice shots. Let's see if she can find some raiders here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Spectre, but the uh, the alarm lasts for about four minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not positive exactly. I know it's somewhere around that time frame, four to six minutes ish. Um, I like how she she took a loop down below to see if she could pick up an extra kill on the way. I think mm -hmm. she she has a comfortable amount of time to get out, but not enough to really push in. Oh. oh. Camping in the Scout truck. On her. The one of the dirtiest things you can do so is sit in that truck. I've this. had this happen to me. Whoever that is deserves to be killed by grenades. And they're, it looks like they're throwing nades back too. This is tense. You got this. That would have been fun. Oh, GG's, GG's let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Well Excellent job. That was that was freaking tense there at the end. Grenades oh, getting yeah. thrown, ambushed out of the truck. If you if you Man, camp that extract that in the back of the truck, you're a bad person. <laughs> right? that's, that's all. <laughs> exactly. <looking> <laughs> well, yeah, and then we saw that last grenade was actually her own grenade coming back at her, by the way. Oh, she threw it, it, it bounced off of it and landed back and she almost blew herself oh. up. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been tough. That would have been rough. That man. would have, that would have put that would have been the nail in the coffin for a very rough day in Tarkov. <laughs> but Rakunzel making some big strides in the last two raids of the day to try to pull some points back.
Oh, it has been an absolute just nonstop excitement. We've had a lot of ups. We've had a lot more downs today for some of these competitors, but every single one of them has put on a great, great show. And if you guys haven't yet, head over to their channels, give them a follow. Follows are free. So make sure to show all of the competitors some love today. Oh, so Rakunzel, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, she ended up with 31 points, possibly that raid, and nice. Blinks at 32. Super, super close for those guys. But what we're gonna do now is I, I I'm gonna pick your brains real quick about the raid that we just saw, because we saw a lot, right? I, I want to talk about Dex, unfortunately, getting taken out very, very early. <sighs> What do you think Dex could have possibly done better, Doc? That's a tough one. I love Dex to death. He's awesome. I think... I mean, you never you never know who's hiding behind a corner, you know? I think breaking his legs, making that noise, and then trying to heal once he was in, um, that just that set it up for you know whoever was in there was heard all that happening and was like, you know, I'm gonna come uh, I'm gonna come check this out. And peekaboo, there he is. Bam. Uh, there's it's it's very hard to fix any of that. Uh, just yeah. don't jump off of high places anymore, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that would be my suggestion also. Make sure that you're not doing Superman jumps off of any and trying to hit the superhero landing because in Tarkov, yeah. you're just going to break your legs every single time. All right. Well, I believe we are going to take a short break real quick while we get all the points tallied up and make sure we have all of those, uh, those T's crossed. Actually, I'm, I'm being told right now. Hold on. In my ear. Yes, I'm being told <laughs> that we are going straight into our brackets. They're ready. They've got everything set up. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see our standings and who is moving on to next weekend. Oh, I'm excited for this. Wow. Oh, that man. Oh, wow. Rakunzel making a huge comeback in those last two raids. You got to remember, she had negative points through three raids and to put up 52 plus points in the last two raids, absolutely huge. Dex, unfortunately, ending at 16.5. Tarkov was not kind to Dex today. We all have those days, some of us more than others, like myself. I, I have those days almost every day in Tarkov. But <laughs> Rakunzel, 52 that means Angry Elmo with 66.5 will be moving on, and so will Blank TV being our champion for today with 99 points, putting up huge scores. Wow, guys, congratulations. So that means November 13th will is Blanks for our first semifinals, and November 14th will be Angry Elmo in our semifinals B. Guys, once again, I want to thank every single person here at Evasion and BSG all of our battle mods, all of the people that put in work behind the scenes. Oh, I believe what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to get ready. We're going to go raid the champion. But before we do, Doc J, go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you and where they can catch you. Guys, thank you again for uh, having me. I, I love casting these. I have some, such a good time, and it's an honor to cast with legends like Spectre and Unfluffy Bunny. Uh, but yes, uh, Doc J, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Doc J. A lot of Tarkov, a lot of craziness, and a lot of fun. But thank you. Of course, of course. And Spectre21, where can the people find you, sir? Twitch.tv slash Spectre21 on Twitch and uh, just about every social. Same uh same name but i just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure to be here thank you for having me it's always a great time uh being here with evasion and it is absolute pleasure as always getting to cast with both of you gentlemen i am your host unfluffy bunny you can find me at twitch.tv slash unfluffy bunny pretty much every single day and uh on all of the socials at unfluffy bunny also and guys we're gonna go ahead and i believe we are going to send it over to our champion today and uh, we're gonna hop over to their channel and give them a, uh, a little quick interview over there so don't go anywhere let's get into that and uh, we'll see you guys in just a moment much love to everybody and we'll see you tomorrow same time same place much love everybody